We are live back at it again. Finally, this game is getting underway, YouTube. We are about to get first pitch. A little bit of a rain delay, but we are back and better than ever. What's going on, Owen Kenny? Dodgers, Padres, I'm excited. Rain delay does not stop us. And first pitch underway, Xander Bogars grounds one to Max Muncy, and he makes the easy play. First pitch, first out for L.A., in game three of this set. Hopefully the conditions, it didn't look too bad, the rain, when I was looking. They were just taking the tarp off at 7 o'clock, so they had the tarp on for a while. It shouldn't be too wet the fields. We got Fernando Tati Jr. He rakes at Dodger Stadium. You saw that 11 homers in 30 games. All right, the audio is sounding good and everything. He's going to go yard today. He's gone yard, I think, twice in this series already. He went yard last night. Or two nights ago, I'm sorry. He had a big two-run shot to tie the game up. Fastball inside to Tatis. James Faxon's got a really good curveball. Along with the fastball that is high velocity. It was like 96, 97 last year. Yeah, there's that curveball. Tries to get it back door just outside. Two and one to Tatis. Oh, and Kenny, you think... The Dodgers are winning this easy. Also, Owen, you can hop in the, the, the stage if you want to. We should get some more viewers, hopefully, as we go along here. We had we had Flash and Pitch the Ball come tune in. Two and two right here to Tatis. Let's see where Paxton goes. Curveball. Does Tatis go? He does not go. I didn't think he went. Three and two. Good hold on the curveball. He might double up with that curveball. If you give Tatis another fastball, we know he can do damage with it. And he is prone to chasing. Very good hold up right there. Good call by on the ump over there at first base. He goes fastball outside. Tatis gets a piece of it to stay alive. Three and two. Twenty-four percent of that. That's crazy. Tatis, that one's going to be flown. Kind of shallow into left center. And Kike Hernandez running all the way from the other side of the field. He had to run a long way for that catch. And two away here for James Paxton. Let's take a look at the Dodgers defense. Come on, put the Dodgers defense. That was, I, feel, I thought they were about to put up the Dodgers defense. But anyone watching on YouTube, make sure y'all hop on over Play by TV. We're watching Dodgers versus Padres on Sunday night baseball right now. Playback.tv slash MLB Red Zone. You can watch live with us. And Jake Corona, we're squaring up to bunt right there. First pitch is upstairs, 1 0. Game was in a little bit of a rain delay. We've had um, multiple tries. We were live at 7 o'clock, but um, should be good to go. There should It doesn't look too bad, the weather. I think it was mainly just precautionary. They had the tarp on the field, it was raining before the game. And then just to get the players settled in and let them warm up, they delayed it 45 minutes. 2-0 right here to Crone Zone. Taken outside, 3-0. and Release your inhibitions. Man, I need to get off TikTok. I, I used I uninstalled TikTok for like a year and a half, and now I'm back. It's really terrible for you. Jake Crone, where it takes a fastball. On his own. Lots of fastballs so far from Paxton. Velocity not crazy high. Uh, like last year, I saw him throwing like 97 with balls. And really, really good. Goes on another fastball in the zone and gets back in the count 3 2 once again. Um, and also, Jay Cronenworth, man, look at the adjustments. He's been, he's been raking to start the year off. He's been looking really, really good, surprising me. I think I compared him to Max Muncy in, I don't know if it was a TikTok or um, the weekly recap show that we just posted. But he really does remind me of Max Muncy. Very similar in inconsistent players, but they've got talent. They got pop. They take bad pitches and they are good, but also they're kind of sometimes frustrating to watch. But when they're locked in, Max Muncy and Jay Cronenworth are really fun to watch. And Crone Zone over the past few weeks has been really great. That and third in the lineup as well. 3 2 right here goes to the fastball upstairs. All fastballs right there. I think seven fastballs. The entire count, Jake Cronenworth works a walk to bring up Manny Machado. Damn, the Padres coming out with all the cleats tonight. Pink cleats. We saw Tatis had some sick cleats on. Looking really, really good. 
Fernando Tatis Jr. James Paxton. Machado, that was going to be first pitch flown into right field. Actually, relatively deep. On the warning track, Teoscar Hernandez goes, and he makes the play. The wind's got to be going to the right, because that did not look like it was hit hard. And the LA Dodgers coming up here in the bottom of the first inning. Paxton looking pretty strong in the first. Release. Owen, Owen, <laughs> you can hop on stage if you want to, Owen. We're in commercial break. James Paxton just dominated the Padres. See Mookie, Otani, Freeman, and Will Smith. I think that top four, so far to start the season off, it's been insane. Mookie Betts, I think this is the hottest start he's, he's gotten off to in his entire career. He's been flat out the best player in baseball to start the season off. Also, this series has been really great to watch. The game number one was electric, and we've seen so many great games between. So I, I'm excited for this game. Release your ambitions. Let's get the YouTube live stream. Join us. Hey, anyone viewing on YouTube, make sure y'all hop on over to playback.tv slash MLB Red Zone. Y'all can watch this live with us. Not only watching my face, but watch the Dodgers versus Padres game live um, and for free. So come tune in. Join us live on Playback TV. Hey, what's going on? Welcome back. Pitch the ball. We are here. Back from the rain delay. And it's looking good. I'm excited. This should be a really great game. Very great game tonight. This is probably the most excited I've been for a baseball game this entire season. Outside of opening day for all the teams. But just a matchup that's – i it's my favorite. It's been my favorite for the past four years. Seeing these top three, man. These top three, you can't say for granted, man. We can't say for granted this top four. But top three especially – Three Hall of Famers, all in their prime of their careers. Mookie Otani, Freeman, Will Smith, Muncy, Te Teoscar Hernandez also on the low. Been incredible to start the season off. He's, he's been a great hitter his entire career. And Kike, Gavin Lux. Got you Darvish on the mound. You Darvish, veteran, still really, really great. He's got like eight pitches he can go to at, at any time. There we go. Mookie Betts stepping in for the Doyers in the bottom of the first inning. First pitch, slider outside, taken by Mookie. 223 OPS. We're already starting to put the stats up for this season. He's got six tanks already. Six tanks, 364 batting average. Mookie Betts is locked in. Gets a good sweeper right there on the outside part of the plate. One and one to Mookie Betts. Darvish deals and Mookie bets that one's going to be driven. If that one's fair, that one might go. And it was not actually okay. It was just foul. Jersey profile almost makes a sliding catch in foul territory, but um, more off the end of the bat than I initially thought. Also, that just reminded me um, that we saw the benches clear last night. Jersey some profile. It's going to be interesting when he comes up, man. It's going to be interesting. I would love to see some beef between these teams. I mean, they've had a real rivalry, but to see real beef um, and Jerickson Profar, Will Smith getting into it, really over nothing. It, 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 I don't think he was intentionally coming in on him at all, but Jerickson Profar took offense and one and two just outside right there. Also, Mookie Betts, I was so surprised when the benches cleared um, last night or two nights ago. No, it was last night. Mookie Betts was like right in the middle of it, which you never see. Mookie Betts, I think I've seen multiple occasions him in an interview talking about like, I'm a lover, not a fighter. I, he was talking about the Yankees, Red Sox benches clearing in like 2018. Um, it, it was a really big fight. I think it was when Tyler Austin uh, charged at, I think it might've been Joe Kelly. And um, Mookie Betts does not want any part of it. He, he's a lover, not a fighter, but he was right. I, I think I saw him like in the middle of the scuffle. So two and two right here. We're going to good at bat so far. Six pitches. Let's see where Darvish goes. Goes to the slider. Actually a splitter 
it counted that over the middle of the play. Mookie Betts lines it up the middle for a leadoff single. Really good at that right there. I think that was um, – it kind of did look like a slider initially, but let's see. Yeah, that was a slider. A slider left it middle, middle. Mookie Betts does what he does. Stays back on it. Drills it 100 off the bat. And it's going to set up Shohei Otani with a runner on first base. Also, Jackson, Maryland, center field. He made a phenomenal play out there on defense. This is a 20-year-old who's never played center field in his life, and he's making the adjustments. Mookie Betts, first pitch is going to steal second base, move into scoring position. Out of boy, Mook. Get a good jump off of Darvish. Darvish is a pitcher that you can steal on. He's obviously got a very long... Long set, holds his foot out. Oh, and one here to Showtime. I want to do a legendary Shohei Otani call like Matty V. Oh, first pitch, caressing. Lean into it. I was just watching that clip. Just for 0-2 oh, right there. Great splitter from Darvish. Perfect location. Now you go fastball upstairs, 96. You get Shohei Otani swinging three-pitch strikeout. Let's see where Darvish wants to go. He could go back to that splitter. Same location, but he is going to go fastball. Misses low, though. He wanted that pitch upstairs. You can see Campusano framing up. Goes downstairs, but Shohei is going to foul it off. Damn, look at Shohei. Showtime hit a, a big Oppo Taco homer two nights ago. 0-2 oh, right here. Darvish deals. He's going to leave a splitter right over the middle of the plate. Otani's just out in front. Rips it foul. <laughs> they even show the exit velos of Otani when he's pull pulling it foul. 105. If he kept that one fair, just stayed back on it a little more, that pitch is gone. And 0-2. Oh, and After that splitter, I'm probably not going back to the splitter. Let's see. Maybe fastball upstairs. It's going to kind of go, try to go backdoor slider, misses away. Otani working a great at bat right now, one and two. Let's see where Darvish goes. He's going to go splitter again. He's got to locate it. He's going to go splitter up and away. Again, probably not where he wants it. So the command's a little bit off right now. Otani's able to foul that pitch off way outside. Remains one and two. Most extra base hits in his first 75 at-bats. How many at-bats is Shohei probably is not even close to 75 yet. Is he? Let's think about it. It's like, what, 14? I think the Dodgers are 11 and six, and we see a cutter down and in. That's you, Darvish, at his best right there. It is. I mean, he hasn't seen a cutter. You're not thinking about a cutter. He's got so many different pitches he can go to at a high level inside. Great location right there. On that low and in cutter, gets Otani to swing over it for the first strikeout of the game for you, Darvish. But it's the Dodgers are 11 and 6, so 17 times 4. Actually, I guess he's probably around 75 at bats. Hopefully the audio is working. Hello? Hello? Hello. Dodgers. Dodgers. Padres. Padres. Freddie Freeman up at the plate. Oh, Freddie Freeman. That one's going to go foul. Into foul territory. Jerks to Profar with the sliding catch in foul territory. Redeems himself for missing the pat the last one. Dude, why are they showing the exit below on that, bro? That, that pitch was shot. Uh, at a launch angle of like 100 degrees in the air. But Jerson Profar, really nice play on the on the padding, near the padding. Shout out to Jerson Profar. He's off to a great start in San Diego. Really struggled over the past two seasons. But coming back to San Diego, he's just different. Comes back here. There's something about San Diego. Maybe it's the weather that makes him play so much better. His defense also is really – it's not highly touted at all, but a, right, a really nice play in foul territory. Got Will Smith up here bat 356. Will Smith's been raking, man. Elite defender. He's one of the more valuable players in baseball. 
one and oh, just outside with the cutter. Two and oh, right here to Will Smith. Mookie still on second base. Fastball just low. Yeah, the commands have been a bit off. He's made big pitches when he's needed to with that cutter inside to Otani. But, yeah, he's missing with a, a lot of his pitches right now. He was down 3-0 to, um, I think, Mookie in the, in the first at-bat, but he battled back. 3-0. Oh. Little slider. That's the thing with Darvish. He's got seven, eight pitches he can go to. Cutter, slider, curveball, splitter, fastball. And he's got so many different forms of it as well. Like the, the cut fastball, the sink fastball, the slow curveball, faster curveball, harder slider, slower slider. And we see him miss outside with the fastball. So that's going to set up first and second, two away for Max Muncy here in the bottom of the first inning. Oh, and you think Max Muncy's about to hit a tank right here? Hey, 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 hey. Also, the velocity, you Darvish is normally throwing like 96. Saw 93, 94 right there. Max Muncy's looked good in the at-bats that I've seen with Muncy. He's looked pretty good. He's he's being more aggressive. That's the thing with Muncie. He just got to be aggressive. He sometimes is too patient. And yeah, Darvish way off right there with the curveball. But when Muncie is swinging the bat, he's got a great eye. But he just gets too patient at times. Takes a lot of pitches that he can easily drill. Um, and he's obviously very, very um, – he's got some of the most power in baseball when he's right. <sighs> Takes a curveball right down the middle right there. One and one. Oh, I guess the conditions are <laughs> playing a factor. Darvish, I think he's trying to get the mud off his shoes. That's what I'm assuming right there. One and one. Cutter inside. One and two. Good pitch, man. I love the, the cutter insides look good so far. Now you could go splitter away. Go splitter away. Also, Mookie Best trying to take third. One and two. Let's see splitter away right here, Darvish. We might go fastball. So I would go splitter away. He, oh, he goes curveball low. Max Muncy able to take it. Lots of curveballs. Three curveballs so far to Muncy. Two and two. I like the splitter away right here. 23 pitches. Oh, my days. That is crazy. That is a crazy stat. And the thing is, that's going to stand for the entire season. If they're healthy, Mookie Betts is probably going to have more runs than a lot of teams in the first inning, which is wild. That's that's actually wild. You Darvish deals. Muncie just under the fastball. It's going to be popped up in the infield for the second baseman or shortstop Hassan Kim to make the play. So Dodger strand two in the bottom of the first inning, and we take it to the Top of the second here in LA on Sunday Night Baseball. Hey, 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 baby. Hey, man. Playback.tv. Dot TV slash MOB Red Zone. Red Zone. Tick tock. We are back. Hey, anyone viewing on YouTube, make sure y'all hop on over to Playback TV. We are in commercial break currently. We are watching and commentating on Padres versus Dodgers. About to make a TikTok to get some people to hop in. What's up, everybody? The Dodgers and Padres game has started. We had a little bit of a rain delay, but we are back here, top of the second inning, and come tune in. We're going to watch this game live all night. One of the best rivalries in baseball. You can watch this game live with us with Owen, um, and yeah, we just vibe out. We chat, 
and we commentate, watch baseball, enjoy it. So come tune in, playback.tv slash MLB Red Zone. USAA. We are back here. Rest in peace to Jeffrey. Rest in peace. Oh, man. Producer at Sunday Night Baseball. Rest in peace. Let's go. Lady. Lady. We are back here at top of the second inning. James Paxton back out on the mound for LA versus Jerickson Profar in the five hole. Switch hit and left fielder. Off to a very hot start for San Diego. Gets a inside fastball right there. Makes it one and one. Love me some Jerickson Profar. It's pretty crazy how he sucked last year in Colorado, but – Goes over like Colorado is the best place that you could resurrect your career, but not nah, Jerson Profar was one of the worst hitters in baseball as well. Like he was that bad. He gets blown by a fastball right there. 93. The velocity for both pitchers right now, not looking as sharp as they normally can be. Yeah, dude. Last year with Colorado, dude, he was terrible. <laughs> Dude, he had a 77 OPS plus. He had a 236 average, 680 OPS, 364 slugging. What is we doing, Jerry Profar? And he's got a line out right here to Max Muncy. 105 off the bat. Let's see a replay of this. Right to Max Muncy. Unlucky from Profar. Takes a curveball. And hammers it. Paxton starts Ha Sung Kim off with the first pitch curveball. One. Oh, and one to Ha Sung Kim. Ha Sung Kim, I love Ha Sung Kim so much. Such a quality player. And I'm surprised they moved him from the leadoff spot. He was the leadoff hitter for all of last season. And they moved him to shortstop. Switching him and Xander Bogarts, which a great move for the defense and the team. But um, his bat was phenomenal last year. He's also very clutch. He's got great bats of ball skills. He puts up good at bats. Let's see that. Let's see that. Cha cha let's see a changeup. He has a changeup in the back. He really has just been a lot of fastballs. It's been like 60, 70% fastball so far for Paxton. But to a righty right here, ha Sung Kim, I think a changeup low and away would be really good. Just go with the fastball up and inside. ha Sung Kim, I think, got a piece of that one. Yeah, two and two. Boom. Let's see. Change up away, James. Just continue to pound fastballs in. 95 right there. Up and inside. It's good location. He's locating his fastball well right now. It's good spots, but Kim is expecting it. Um, through two, I think you got to go curveball right here. I don't think you could throw him another fastball. He's, he's going to go with another fastball upstairs, and Hustle and Kim works a walk. Yeah, James Saxon needs to mix it up a bit. I think Paxton, I'm checking his savant right now. I think he does have a at least a cutter. I know he has a cutter, I'm pretty sure. At least last year he did. Yeah, he's got the cutter and the changeup. He doesn't throw it a lot, though. This year, it's been 67% fastball so far. That's wild. I don't think it was that high last year. And first pitch, Kim is going to take off and take second base. So we saw Mookie Betts first pitch stealing. And also ha -Sung Kim first pitch stealing to move into scoring position for Campusano. 
a good throw from Will Smith, but a nice jump from – actually, that's a close play. It actually might have gotten him. We have to see another angle. We'll see if L.A. challenges this. Oh, I don't know if he got him, though. I think the glove, like, it, it went over his butt before he touched the bag. Let's see here. This is probably a better angle. Ooh, I don't know if they're going to challenge that. It's very bang, bang. It is close. Would you challenge that? I think the Dodgers are challenging it. I don't think they're going to overturn that. I think that's too close. The call in the field is safe. And that's really bad. There's no definitive review, and they are challenging it. We'll see if this gets overturned. From my perspective, I'd love to see your guys' I don't think he's going to be called out. And they've got the call. I guess I'm dumb. I'm surprised. I didn't think that was too definitive of an angle. No, I mean, okay, I, I guess it is. That's really, really close. I, I They didn't show that freeze frame angle. That definitely is very valid why they overturned it. But in real time, it looked very bang, bang. There wasn't a super definitive angle, but that's the right call right there. And two away here in the second inning. Good challenge by L.A. And Luis Campusano down 0-2 here. One of my favorite stances in all baseball. Also, he really chokes up on the bat. I think he uses a weird bat head, but I noticed that he does choke up even with the bat head. Yeah, I, actually, I don't even know if it's a weird bat. It's just he chokes up almost all the time. Yeah. One and two fastball upstairs. Foul the way. Paxton's got to mix it up, dude. He's got to. Last year, yeah, last year he incorporated the cutter 16% of the time. He was very good last year. Um, even though he had a 4-5 ERA um, in 100 or yeah, 100 innings, he his stuff was great, and he had some really, really great starts. And Campusano is going to ground out right there to end the second inning. 0-0 zero, zero here, Sunday night baseball. All right, yo, I do need to lock in. I, I, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't have that freeze frame angle when I was watching. They didn't have, they didn't show that when they were doing the replay. They showed it after they called it safe. But yeah, that definitely was a, um, safe call. Release your inhibition. All right, let's check on some of the other games that happened today. There was a lot of baseball, um, that that was really good. I know the. The Braves had a three-run walk-off, not a walk-off, go-ahead home run from Marcelo Zuna in the ninth inning, down by two runs. Marcelo Zuna hits a three-run shot in the ninth inning to give Atlanta the win over Miami. They moved to three and thirteen. Miami, damn man, that's also this is a tough loss. Who sold? Who sold it for Miami? Oh, it's gonna be Tanner Scott. Tanner Scott's a good pitcher as well. Their bullpen's been tough. And they do have a good bullpen. All four of these guys, Sixto Sanchez, really good. Tanner Scott's really good. Andrew Nardi's really good. But shout out to Atlanta. Look at this lineup, dude. Marcelo Zuna, the five. Marcelo Zuna is crazy, his resurrection. He's actually one of the best hitters in baseball over the past, like, you you discount April from last year where he was terrible. He's He's been in a 1,000 OPS hitter ever since. The Cubs get a dub over the Mariners. This is a good matchup between these two teams. Also, I forgot they got Mitch Garver, Seattle. Seattle 6-10 and 10 to start the season off. Castillo 9Ks. Looks good. I'm not sure. Also, Chet Holmgren in an ad. Release your inhibitions. All right, so we are – I picked the pods to win this game in my weekly pick -em. I'm currently 3-5 and five on the season. We need to get – this is actually a must-win game for us. We need the pods to come through. We need them. 
because we need to get over the winning percentage of 600 by the end of April to avoid the pick and payoff. And being three and five, four and five, there's not going to be many opportunities for April 14th already. So this is a must win uh, to keep our season alive in April. We got Teoscar Hernandez up against you, Darvish. And it's funny that they're doing Jerry's profile after last night. I don't think there's going to be anything that transpires, especially after Profar's first at bat. It probably would have been early in the game that they potentially could have gone after Profar or the Dodgers go or the Padres go after the Dodgers. See, Oscar Hernandez is really good. Oscar Hernandez, he's a really good He's a good player. He's very, very underrated. In the six hole, I think him in the six hole is crazy. He's going to ground out right there. Two, I think that's Yuji Rosario at third base for San Diego. He makes the play. But yeah, Teoscar Hernandez, he's a he's a 3-4 hitter on a very good team. And you have the top four that the Dodgers have. And then Teoscar just slotting into the six hole. He's just an all-around great hitter. Comes through. He's clutch. He's got 25 homer, 30 run. Um, 30. He's honestly like the new JD Martinez for LA. That what J, the role the role that Martinez played in the lineup last season very similar. James Alman fouls off a fastball right there. Zero and one. Alman made a nice play in center field last night, and I think he hit a home run in the series as well. Even though he struggled um, to start the season off a little bit. Also, I think he had the highest swing in. Miss rate last season, James Alman. It was something with either chase rate or swing and miss percentage. James Altman led the league, even though he played well and he had moments. Um, he's definitely got stuff that he needs to work on, but his defense is very, very valuable in center field. And we see him line a diving stop right there by the Crone Zone. Jake Cronenworth. Jake, that's a second play, I think. Um, Cronenworth, man, Cronenworth can just, he's, he's a second baseman Cronenworth and he's just moved over to first base, I think last year. And what a play, what a play, a diving stop to his right. That's really, that's a, that's one of the hard, that's insane. Actually, normally those plays are kind of just like diving, but he fully had to go airborne right there to make that play. We got Kike Hernandez. Also, whoa, Kike Hernandez. Um, before the season started, I saw in spring training, he made an adjustment with his swing. He completely changed how his hands were located. He went back to his old swing um, compared to his new swing where it's kind of more upright compared to behind him. And now he's going back to his old form, which I, I don't like his old form. It looks cool as old form, but his new form, yeah, he's going completely back to his old form, which I don't like. Even though he did have success with it in 2021, I just think it's more consistent. Send Altman to the minors. I think James Altman, James Altman's a little overrated in my opinion. People valued him crazy last year. They loved him. I don't think um, he's a bad player at all, but Kike Hernandez lines one right there. Yuji Rosario. Good inning right there for you, Darvish. Lots of curveballs and lots of line outs. Great play by Crone Zone. And we take it to the top of the third inning. But James James Outman, people people value him very, very high. How old is James Outman? So he's 25, 26 years old. He's honestly older than you would have thought. And yeah, I mean the Dodgers, do they have any other center field options in the minors? Dodgers depth chart. Well, on the major league roster, they don't have anyone that can really play center field. Feel the rain on yours. Also, Jason Hayward's on the injured list. I didn't know that. What is he on the injured list for? That's a tough injury. Um, dude, it doesn't even say. Summary, or we go to transactions. Also, let me look at the what else happened today in baseball. Yeah, let me share the tab. Brew Crew, 
Baltimore finally they get a must needed win. I think Bruker would have swept this series. And Jackson Holiday gets his first le- uh, big league hit. And look at Baltimore, seventh and eighth inning, scoring three runs to take the lead. Oh, so Corbin Burns had a tough outing. Actually, it wasn't even that bad. Only two earned runs in five innings. Because I saw a clip of him being really – like he was like throwing his glove. He was very angry with his outing. But honestly, not terrible. Colin Ray <laughs> – dude, Colin Ray. The Brewers are – Brewers, I'm telling y'all, they're going to fall off. Also, William Contreras in the leadoff hole. Do not like that. Even though he's, I mean, he's raking, but he's a he's a three hitter. That's weird. And the South Freeland, like, that's like the definition of like the new generation of lineups. Because like Schwarber batting leadoff and Trey Turner batting second. Obviously, regularly it should be Turner batting first, but it's the new it's the new wave. I, I don't. I, but Contreras doesn't fit as even though he does get on base a lot. He works walks. I think Frat Free like really um, defines a leadoff hitter. Bryce Terang is also a great leadoff hitter. Both guys with speed as well. All right, we are back here. Sunday night baseball, top of the third inning. Got Jackson Merrill. I love Jackson Merrill so far. He's been a great at bats, and we see him ground out right there to Gavin Lux, one away. <laughs> We're going to see if Paxton just is going to continually pound fastballs. Dodgers should still have Bellinger. I disagree. I disagree. He went over to Chicago. He needed a new team. He needed a new team. Also, he fits so good in Chicago. And also, what's what's Bellinger's contract again? I think it was like a two-year. It was actually it was a good amount of money. It was like two years. I think he's getting paid around 25-ish a year. I think it might be like two-year 50 for Belly. Yuji Rosario, yeah, he's looked good so far, 19 ABs. I think he's 24-year-old. He's got the same build as me, dude. Same build, 5'7", 150 pounds. Exact same build. Down 0-2 right here. 0-2, I guarantee you. Actually, he might go curveball here. He's going to go curveball. He hangs it, though, and Yuji Rosario makes him pay. That one's going to be going to the wall in left field. Hernandez slips a little bit, and Yuji Rosario is going to cruise into second base for a one-out double. That ball ripped, 105 off the bat, and a good swing right there from Yuji Rosario. Good swing, very, very simple swing. He doesn't do a lot with this. Lower half just puts the bats of the ball and Paxton made a mistake pitch right there. So it's going to bring up the nine hitter. Is that no, it's not going to be Tyler Wade because you drew Tyler Wade's all Tyler Wade's been playing a lot of third base for San Diego. He's put up really good at bats along with Yuji Rosario. So their third base um, platoon with Machado being injured has been really, really good. And actually, that's going to bring up the top of the lineup, Xander Bogarts. Back up to the play. So Yuji Rosario batting ninth. Yeah, Bogarts have struggled. I know he hit a home run a couple nights ago. Big home run. Um, and I think the Cubs comeback win. But at the leadoff hole, Bogarts has not looked good to start the season off. But he honestly, he he played a lot better than probably people think because he had such high expectations with a 13-year contract. He's still a very, very, very good player. And I think he probably should improve from what he did last year at the plate. Yeah, so 50-plus extra base hits still. Very consistent. He, he was a lot better in the second half compared to the first half. Two and one right here. Paxton fastball up and inside. The fastball command's really good. He needs to he needs to stop. He, he's using two pitches. He's it's I mean, it's 70% fastball so far. That's crazy. And he, he's got a good fastball. But it's not like he's got a Roldis Chapman or like Edwin Diaz or um, Mason Miller type of fastball. And that fastball is going to miss inside. And a one-out walk here. So first and second to bring up Fernando Tatis Jr. Fernando. I need to get better at that call. Fernando Tatis Jr. Five tanks on the year. He's going to win the MVP this season. You can book that in the in the writing. Guaranteed. My MVP picks are looking spicy, dude. Tatis and Mike Trout. 
Dude, I'm locked in on my award predictions. Locked in. Who not? Oh, I picked Hunter Green to win side. He's doing bad to start the season off. But oh, look at the Marlins guy as well in the stands. Marlins guy is at every single game, dude. Every single game. It's wild. All right, okay. Oh, and we might need to delete that comment because that does not represent Tatis. He did not do anything wrong. Goes to the change. There we go. There we go, James. Mixing it up with the change up right here. Who are you calling? Who are you calling Chunky, Owen? I don't know why you're coming out with these random uh, shots at people. One and one inside. Two and one. Get some, if he leaves something over the middle of the play, Tatis is rocketing it. Guaranteed. He throws a curveball, leaves it middle. Tatis is going to pull it into right uh, to left field. He leaves a fastball middle, middle. He's going to send it to right field. Guaranteed. So Paxton needs to locate his pitches right now. Dodger Stadium looks sold out. Yeah, and a lot of pitches through. Two and a third right now. Padres getting runners on base, making pass and work. I'd love to see the cutter used right here to Tatis. Get it in on the hands. I think that would be a great pitch to get a ground out, potentially. Oh, yeah. Hopefully we don't get more rain. Actually, look, I thought it was going to be perfectly good after the rain. And Paxton once again goes fastball inside, just misses. I like the location, but... It's just the same pitches over and over again. Three and one. Let's see if he goes curveball right here, or does he go back to the fastball? He's going to go to the curveball low, and that's going to load the bases for Jake Croninworth, the Crone zone. So back-to-back -back walks here for Paxton. The command not looking too good. And let's see if the Crone zone can come through. He's hot lately. I love to see this, man. The Crone zone. Jake Croninworth. Tatis is not still juicing. He he never juiced in game. That's the thing with the the it was absolutely wild. He literally never did it one time in game. Um, and he I don't I don't honestly I don't think it was like really intentional that he was really trying to juice in game. So like I need to do this to get better. Like a Rod, like Barry Bonds, like all the regular ones. It was totally different Tatis' situation. But yeah, Paxson does not look at the command is completely. Um, off right now, and he's just not utilizing a lot of pitches. We see a sinker um, that actually had some good movement to it, and Cronenworth's going to foul that one away. Oh, wow. 440 and two grand slams. Okay, he's – yeah, Cronenworth is very clutch. We've seen him in the in the 2022 ALD, NLDS versus the Dodgers. He had a lot of big hits to propel the Dodger, the Padres to upset the Dodgers in that 2022 playoff round. And one and two. So fastballs upstairs. We'll see if Paxton goes to the curveball low or does he continue pounding fastballs upstairs? I would go with the curveball low right here. Oh, what's up? Unstoppable. Unstoppable. Crazy fun is a very interesting username. Hop on over to play by TV. You can watch his game live with us and he does go curveball. That one's going to be grounded up the middle. Mookie bet steps on second and turns to a big double play for the LA Dodgers and James Paxson to escape the third inning unharmed. He went curveball, not the best location, but Cromer does not hit it hard. Mookie bets was in the perfect spot and makes the easy tailor made double play. And a zero zero James Paxton. Never a doubt once, for real. Shout out to James Paxton. Surprise, these first few games for these teams have been real shootouts. I don't know if this game is going to be super high scoring. They want to see me. All right, let's share. Oh, McCutcheon hits 300th homer. McCutcheon's got the cleanest swing in baseball. Look at this swing, man. Were they also were they down 7-2 right here? No, they're up 7-2. Shout out to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's been high. Look at Kutch. 
Give it to Also, dude, Aaron Judge right now has, I think, 260 homers in his career. Isn't that isn't that wild? Like McCutcheon, McCutcheon is 38 years old, I think. He just hit his 300. And Judge at 30, who's still in his prime, has 260 already. And he's going to easily get to 500, Judge. He's pushing 600 if he stays healthy. That's all I'm saying, man. One of the best power hitters in baseball. Also, Pete Alonso. Pete Alonso is a guy he could actually get to 600. Swear to God. Well, 600's 600 is wild, but what is he? Let me see what he's at right now. Because every single year he's at over 40 home runs, and he plays every single day, and he's still he's okay. He's 29, which is a little older than you would want. Because what's what year did he come up in? He came up when he was 24. If he came up like two years earlier, but um, already he's he's two away from 200. And he's only 29 years old. Pete Alonso could really push like 53. Um, and then the COVID year, he got 16, which sucks. But 37, 40, 46. And he's got six this year, which is leading all of baseball in 14 games. You Darvish back on the hill. Versus Gavin Lux in his first at bat. Gavin Lux gets on right here. You bring up one, two, three for the Dodgers lineup. This is why the Dodgers lineup is the best lineup ever. <laughs> I honestly, the thing is, I said the I said the Padres lineup last year was the one of the best lineups ever, and then this year we have the Dodgers lineup. One and one here to Gavin Lux. Goes to the backdoor slider right there. One and two. Great pitch. He likes that backdoor slider. He's tried to go to it a lot. And yet Darvish misses, mixes up the location a ton. He will go high. He will go low every single which way with every single one of his pitches. We see a glove side slider right there. Love the idea that Gavin Lux is able to take it two and two. I would attack him fastball. Yeah, Gavin Lux. Gavin Lux has not put up good at bats so far. He's really struggled this season. Two and two. I would attack, attack him, Darvish. He's gonna go slider, leaves out in the middle of the plate, but slightly grounded to Xander Bogarts. Not hit hard. He got over that ball and one away. Yeah, he just hasn't lined the ball like we've seen Gavin Lux. That's really the problem. He can take pitches, but he's he's not hitting, he's getting over the ball. He's not lining it gap to gap. He, I feel like can't catch up with the fastball either from what I've watched. And Mookie Betts up here, back up for a second at bat. We are genuinely witnessing Mookie Betts, one of the best players like we'll ever see in baseball. Him being so versatile on defense and his offensive abilities consistently since 2016-ish. Um, him winning... The MVP 2018, one of the better MVP seasons ever. Twenty Last year, he would have won the MVP in almost every single other year. He was that guy, but unfortunately, Acuna went 40-70. And we see Mookie Betts line right there. A 74-mile-hour curveball to ha Sung Kim, two away. The fact that he stayed on that curveball that long when uh, Darvish has 94, he sees 74 but right at Ha Sung Kim. Shohei Otani in his second AB. I think he struck out. In the, yeah, he struck out with a good cutter inside in his first at bat. Darvish hold. He said a high splitter, high inside splitter right there from you, Darvish. I don't think that's the location he wanted it, but <laughs> any single pitch. Also, his delivery is so unique because I feel like it's very prone to being able to tip his pitches because he holds for so long. And then he he does a lot with his motion. So and I feel like I feel like I've seen you, Darvish have a moment maybe like four or, or so years ago. It might've been with the Cubs 
Um, or I, I think it was right when he went to San Diego. He struggled a little bit, I'm pretty sure. And I think he had some issue with tipping his pitches. 2-0 right here to Showtime. Let's see a Showtime tank right here. 2-0. Darvish misses. Leaves it middle-middle. Darvish holds. He fires. Goes to that slider inside. 3-0. and Just take the pitches. Right here. I would I would not be swinging 3-0 here. Darvish has not commanded his pitches. Sweeper, splitter, slider. Let's see a little curveball. Backdoor curveball here. 3-0. Oh, he's going slider inside. He ain't giving it, man. He is not giving it to Otani. And Otani being aggressive right there, 3-0. Otani took a massive hack. 3-1. Three, three, now let's see splitter away. Let's see that splitter away. Ooh, is he going to go fastball? He's going to go fastball. Leaves it over the middle of the plate. Otani's going to just foul that off to the left side. Just got under that one. And Darvish working back, making it 3-2 and two right here. On fast, he can't go fastball again. I would be so shocked if he goes fastball again. He's gonna go split. I don't even know what pitch that was. 92, and that's gonna be fouled into oh, almost foul territory. Yuji Rosario though makes a nice play to end the third inning. Still 0 0. Both pitchers command's been inconsistent, but um, both teams have not been able to come through early on in this game. Release your inhibitions. Ooh, you know, let's play. Um, as we're in commercial break quickly, let's play MOB Pickle while we're in commercial break. MOB Pickle is a very fun game. What do you, what, um, Owen or pitch the ball? What, which person, which player do you want me to start off with? This is where you guess the player based on. I'm actually elite at this game. I'm not going to lie. All right, I guess y'all are not commenting. I'll just start off. Actually, I'll just let them pick for me. Jose LeClerc. All right, so this guy is from, not from the Dominican, right-handed batter and right-handed thrower. Um, is either in the league. So he's either in the AL total or he's in the NL West. All right, let's guess. Um, he's not a pitcher. Let's just go. Let's just go with a righty hitter in the... AL East. Let's go Aaron Judge. Or he's not, actually. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Why am I having Soto? No, he's not a lefty, though. <laughs> he's not a lefty. Um, Let's go Vladdy Guerrero. Oh, he's not from Dominican. Actually, Vladdy's from, yeah, Canada. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, dude, I thought I just got it. I thought I just got it. All right. AL East. Toronto. He's a Blue Jay. Right-handed hitter. Right-handed thrower. He is not an infielder, so he's probably – he's an outfielder. Um, George Springer. George. George. I think it's going to be George. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, I thought I got it. No way. All right, it's not an outfielder either. It's a catcher. Alejandro Kirk. Alejandro Kirk. All right, we have to go back to this game. It's about to – dude, it's not – oh, Kirk's from Mexico. Alex Wood. <laughs> I'm surprised you knew that was, Owen. Alex Wood's such a random player. Oh, and you know what team Alex Wood's on currently? I'd be, I don't know if you know who. Uh, I, you might, you might know what team. He's on a weird team now. He just changed teams. Um, Dude, what the hell? Who the hell is this? I guess I'll go. Wait, it's not a pitcher, though. All right, we're, we'll, we'll go back to that. We're going back to this game. This game. About to come back here in the fourth inning. Manny Machado back up at the dish. Unstoppable, crazy fun. Make sure you hop on over to Playback TV. Appreciate you for tuning into the YouTube live stream. And hop on over. You can watch Sunday Night Baseball live with us.
Manny Machado. There we go. Little one zero change up right there. Show him the change up. I would go back to the change. I think a two strike pitch. Padres hitters. That's the last thing that they're expecting. Who goes fastball? Middle, middle. Actually, that one's drilled to center field, and Manny Machado goes yard. His second homer in as many days. And Manny Machado gives the Padres a one to nothing lead on Sunday night baseball. That ball was demolished. I thought that was a foul ball at first. I didn't think he got that. But um, a fastball left outer middle, and Machado gets a hold of it. His power swing looking clean right now. Wow, I'm sorry. I don't. I, oh, and you had to have looked that up. I'm, there's no way you knew because that just happened. I think they DFA'd him, the Giants. But yeah, what a swing. Manny Machado, when he's hitting tanks like this, there's no better power swing than Manny Machado. Clean composed ooh that's a sword right there <laughs> Atta boy San Diego we need a San Diego win I'm not rooting for San Diego Padres but it would be nice for the weekly pick them we need to get we need to get back on track here but I'm just hoping for a good competitive game as we get later into it. I've always done Manny Machado's got the oddest ears. His ears are such odd, bro. It's it looks so weird. His ears. It's got to be because of hats. And James Paxton, what a play, a comebacker right at him, and he tosses it over to first base. That ball in one hundo. That was a really tough play. He made that look a lot easier than it is. A lot of pitchers when they do that, they tip it and then they end up getting a single. Yeah, look at Machado, all on balance. That's what happens, man. When you're throwing seventy percent fastballs. And you leave one over the middle of the plate, the guys are going to be able to hit it in the big leagues. And Machado puts a great swing on it. How someone came here. Ooh, there we go. Change up gets him off balance. Left middle, middle, but Kim way out in front. 0-2. That Dodger fan is so proud of himself. <laughs> Paxton, let's see a curveball here. I would be surprised he goes fastball. Yeah, he does go curveball. Completely spikes that one. Oh, what a play. Oh, I'd be proud of myself after that play. That's that's an MOB level play. That's kind of a mid throw, but that's a that's a hell of a play. He's got some reach. One and two. He goes fastball, just misses upstairs. The Padres are taking these high fastballs out the zone. He continually is going to it. And I think every single time, 10 plus times, he's gone fastball away, fastball up and inside. They're just taking them. And once again, he goes fastball up and inside. And he works it to three and two, Ha Sung Kim. Got to go change up right here. Three, two, go change up. Go change. I, if he goes fastball here, I'm pissed off. You have to go change up right here. Will Smith, come on. No, don't go fast. Dude, I, what is he doing? He misses He misses way upstairs fastball and he walks off. So I, I don't understand the pitch selection. Why are you going fastball right there? That's going to bring up, I think, Jackson Merrill. To the dish. Dude, Machado, Machado. I think Machado likes the DH life. Pitch the ball. What's going on? Hopefully you're enjoying Sunday night baseball. We are watching fifth walk for Paxton, dude. That's crazy. Oh, and Luis Campusano. That one's driven deep to left. But Kike Hernandez on the warning track makes the play. I thought that ball was gone. But Campusano just gets under it. A slight bit too much. And Hernandez on the track makes the play. Curveball. Not a bad pitch from James Paxton right there. A good swing right there from Kansas County. That was a moonshot. Yeah, let's see a replay of it. Yeah, I thought that ball was gone. A big, big sigh of relief right there for James Paxton. Now you have a lefty-lefty matchup. 
get out of this. Just keep your team in the game. It's only you've only allowed one run. You get through five innings of shutout of one run ball. That's a that's a solid outing. You know, pitch the ball, you're getting those steps in though. That's that's what's most important. Pounds them in fastball. Yeah, use that fastball early on, pound it inside, but he just can't be so reliant on throwing it consistently 70% of the time, especially when you have the cutter. Use the cutter. It's a different form. It's a good cutter, and he just hasn't gone to it. And a little swinging bun right there, and Jackson Merrill's going to get on with two away, setting up first and second. Shout out to Jackson Merrill. Dude, Camp Busano hit the ball 98 off the bat. Gets a fly out, and then Jackson Merrill, 37 off the bat, and he gets a single out of it. And Yuji Rosario coming up here. Yeah, pitch ball. There was a 45-minute rain delay in this game, but we are back, and we should be good for the entirety of this game. There was a rain delay last night as well. Lots of rain in. It was also raining here in New York. Yeah, Yuji Rosario here. He lined a double down the left field line in his first at bat. He gets blown by a fastball. 95. There we go, Paxton. Get the also get the fastball to 96. That would be really good to see right here. This is a big at bat. For, pretty much could define your start if you could get a strike out here. Work into the fifth inning. I'm seeing the ump cam. I actually really like the ump cam. I really like the ump cam, except when the umpire is looking down. But I would watch an entire game with the ump cam. I find it really cool. You really step into the box of like a big leaguer. And 0-2, and he's gone two fastballs by Yuji Rosario. Here is a time where I would go back to the fastball. This is a good time to go back to the fastball. And yeah, look at that. He's thrown one cutter. One cutter, three curveballs, or right now three changeups. And we see a fastball inside, probably a little bit inside. Um, off the plate, but James Paxton gets the call and strikes out Yuji Rosario on three pitches to get out of the first and second jam. But Manny Machado hits a solo shot here in the fourth, and the San Diego Padres over one to nothing on Sunday night baseball. Yeah, it's been rainy. April, this is what April is. Oh, yeah, let's go back to the MOB pickle. All right, so dude, I don't know how I didn't get it. I got the Blue Jays. A righty in the AL East, I, George Springer, good guess. Also different. We haven't also gotten the age yet, which is weird because I guess 30, 25, 34, 20, that's like the entire age group range. But, okay, right-hander, he's not a pitcher. That's the thing. He's not. I, maybe I think that's a relief pitcher, but I think it would be yellow if it was a starting pitcher. So I don't think it's a pitcher. But it's not an infielder. It's not an outfielder, definitely. It's not a catcher. I don't know who it would be. Um, all right, let's just think of right-handed hitters. I don't think it's Bo Bichette. Um, I guess I'll guess Bo Bichette. Maybe, maybe first base and – no, see, it's not Bo Bichette because the age is not yellow. It's not Bo Bichette. Let's guess – let's guess like a – we either have to go really young or really old. Who's an older, really older guy? Oh, who would they just sign? Justin Turner. Justin Turner, that's it. Justin Turner. And they might consider him a DH. It's Justin. It's Justin. I like that. Except for Angel Hernandez on camera. Dude, Angel Hernandez is wild how much he's getting shit on. And, dude, I just made a video that, um, like, doing an umpire call. Do it Like, I was doing an umpire quiz. And it was actually really cool. Shout out to the New York Times for doing it. The Like, there was, like, four comments on it. About Angel Hernandez. Every Angel Hernandez is getting shit on by every single sports fan, not even baseball fan, sports fan. It's I think he's the most well-known umpire in the history of sports. Basketball, football. And it's so, it deserves the show. It's been so hilarious. When you actually watch a full Angel Hernandez game, it is wild. I honestly, I honestly really enjoy it for a regular season game. It is it is like the game is so entertaining because the amount of calls and big opportunities that he changes just by calling strikes. And there's pitches that are like out here 
and you're like, he's going to call it a strike. And he, every single time for the most part, calls it a strike. It's, it's wild, his strike zone. But we're here in the bottom of the fourth. You Darvish still on the mound. His command's been a bit inconsistent. He's looked pretty good. And I guess we're doing some cool cleats because we've seen like five different players have special cleats. Wow. Shout out to Freddie Freer, the Sunday night baseball cleats. It was the 73 mile hour curveball inside two and one of Freddie. Two and one right here. See a splitter away. Go another curveball. Three and one. I'm going to throw a strike right here to Freddie. I might go cutter up and inside. I would like cutter up and inside or low and inside. I like that pitch. He's going to go sinker. Real, that one's got some sink sink to it. Normally, Darvish's fastball is more straight, but he can really make the adjustment of really throwing a sinker and really throwing a fastball, and it's completely different uh, viewpoints from the hitter. 3-2. He's going to go fastball upstairs. He's going to go fastball low. I think that's another miss. He's missed that, I think, three times. He's trying to go upstairs with it, but he goes low. And Freddie's able to keep it, um, stay alive. 3-2. and two. I would I would go splitter. I like his splitter a lot. He The command's been inconsistent so far. He has left a couple middle, 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 but he's going to go fastball up and away, and Freddie Freeman once again stays alive. He continues to throw those fastballs up. Freddie's just going to foul him away. Turn two. Pitch count down to one. Darvish holds. He fires. He goes sweeper, and Freddie Freeman gets a hold of that, and that one's fair, and that's going to get down into the Wall Fernando Tatis Jr. cuts it in, and Freddie Freeman, a doubles machine, leads off the fourth with a double. A really good at bat right there. Gets a slider, a good location, but that's such a Freddie Freeman at bat right there. And swing that fastball's a good that's a good slider, but perfect right into his bat path. He pulls it, just keeps it fair down the right field line. And one of the best doubles hitters that we've seen in a long time gets another double to set up Will Smith. Fifty-nine doubles last season. It's crazy how Freddie Freeman went to the Dodgers, and he's he's even better than he was on the Braves. He was already on a Hall of Fame trajectory, but he's been even better. He's a top ten player in all of baseball, even at first base. Yeah, the velocity's down 92 for Darvish. He averaged, I think, 95 last year, and he can get up to 96, 97. You Darvish. Oh, and one Darvish deals. Fastball just outside, two and now, or one and one. Last year, this year is averaging 94. Last year, he averaged. 95 and dude you darvish i have to show this in the next commercial break his baseball savant i've never actually looked at it in a long time his savant his savant is the funniest thing ever and will smith that one's gonna drop into center freddie freeman rounding around third base and the dodgers are gonna tie this game up here in the bottom of the fourth inning will smith with an rbi single with 98 i didn't think he got a hold of that very well but i think that was a slider away he stays on it. Very similar to Mookie Betts' leadoff single. And Will Smith with an RBI. RBI machine. He's going to be doing that the entire season. Very important. Him batting fourth behind the top three hitters. Also, look at those clouds. I just know those clouds are menacing. They actually might start raining in this game. Now we got Max Muncy. Still no way. Yeah, honestly, it is it is pretty laughable that Angel Hernandez is still an umpire. It would be national headlines if he gets fired, like mid-season. 
I don't think they would do it midseason. I think after this season, I don't know how umpire contracts work exactly. I know they have very long leashes. And once you become an umpire, unless you do something crazy outside of being an umpire or bad umpire, you're probably going to be – you're not going to be forced to retire or get fired based on your performance uh, and just the track history. You have to really work your way up, especially nowadays. I know you have to – like you go through the minor league levels. It's a grind to actually be in the big leagues. And then once you get there, they're very – it's it's a weird process, but I think it I think it potentially could get some changes, especially if the MOBPA starts like actually cracking down because it's a really big problem, especially now actually with Robo Umps on the way, and Max Muncy swings right through a sinker upstairs two and two. There we go, that sinker upstairs to Muncy right now. I might go back to it if I'm Darvish, but he's got eight pitches he can go to. I might go splitter here. I've been saying the splitter, man. Go the splitter load away right here, and he's going to go cutter inside. I like the cutter, though. I like the cutter a lot. He needs to use it more. But now he's pounding him inside. Go away with your pitches. I think splitter splitter away would get a swing and miss right here. He only threw he only throws a splitter 8% of the time, and it's a good pitch at splitter. Gonna go fastball up and inside. Max Muncy. That one is crushed into deep right field. And Max Muncy with a two-run shot. That ball was crushed. Gets the hands in. He continued to pound him inside. And Muncy made an adjustment. I'm not saying I'm a pitching coach. I said to attack him outside because he, he's throwing like three fastballs. Fastball cutter. And he goes fastball. Not a terrible location. But Muncy with a great piece of hitting. He's been hot to start the season off. And, yeah, dude, that's Max Muncy at his best. He's got such a clean swing. Just stay aggressive, Max Muncy. And this is what he's doing. And a 3-1 Dodgers lead. I'm ahead of your TV. Yeah, you probably are. Oh, and why? I didn't. Why are you watching on your? Um, why are you watching on your television? I mean, you should just be watching on playback TV. Get your actually. I understand why. I think you could set it up. You could probably set it up on your TV. I know if I if I was doing this because I've watched other people do playback TV streams. I, I set it up to my mini projector, and that's just incredible. And yeah, how is your double watching? How did I get a fire under your comment? Who Owen Kenny, man? What a go! What a what a good teammate! What a good streamer for the great. All right, we're not we're, okay. Gilberto community. We're not using the name Gilberto. Gilberto is banned for this thing. We can use it for gamer tags and Teoscar Hernandez. That one is drilled deep to center field, but not enough. Jackson Merrill makes the play on the track. That would have been a really Really, that ball was crushed 99 off the bat of Teoscar. See a replay of Max Muncy. Beautiful swing. Beautiful. Home run in 30 out of 30 ballparks. Thanks, Owen Kenny. It's a beautiful community we're building, man. Beautiful. No, but Angel Hernandez is you no, know, it's funny. I, I, I'm Owen, Owen commented on it. Um, yeah, he just wants to get home to his wife and gets Angel Hernandez is very funny. I, I've seen interviews and clips of him. He's actually very like a genuine, charismatic individual, but he's just a bad MLB umpire. <laughs> That's the only problem. And 71 mile hour curveball right there missed way upstairs to James Outman. Yeah, but dude, how many? I'm counting how many pitches Darvish. Darvish last year, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He threw seven pitches. That's only what it registers on baseball savant. But again, he mixes up the the velocities of the pitch so much where he's got like 10 or 11 different pitches that he actually throws. I'm gonna I'm gonna show a savant um when we're done with this inning right here, but one and two. And also Dar how Darvish is like 38, I think. He's 37, dude. He he doesn't feel that old. I don't because I don't remember his early parts of his career, you Darvish. 
but he's been in the league for a minute. See a slider away. Yeah, his command um, and a lot of at-bats has not been good. That Muncie at-bat, his command was actually good. He located a lot of his pitches. And, dude, we're still showing the replay of this. It was a solid catch, but we don't need to – that's the third time they've shown that catch by that fan. Two and two. Slider. Just the way that registers as a splitter, but – Oh, my. They're interviewing the fan, dude. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. I need to hear it a little. Can't be a ball hawk out here, dude. He must like multiple people to catch that ball. Talking about, I'm not a ball hawk. Backdoor slider right there. Good location, but I've been able to get a piece. I don't want to play it too long. Oh, my bro was like, I knew Machado was up there. I knew he was going to hit a home run. I, I was just ready for it, staying locked in, able to make the catch, man. I I'm an athletic guy. I'm going to get out in front of that slider. That one's going to be popped up. I think Yuji Rosario is calling Profar off, and he makes the play. But the LA Dodgers score three – no, not they, – did they score three runs? Yeah, they did score three runs. Will Smith RBI and Max Muncy two-run homer, and they are – Back ahead here, three to one, and we're still seeing the interviews, dude. Unbelievable. Oh, wait, this is not the end. Of, I thought that was the end of the inning. <laughs> I thought that was the end of the inning. I'm surprised Alex Hernandez. Kike Hernandez fouls that sweeper off, 0-1. Bum, 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 blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh, and one. Darvish misses outside to Kike Hernandez. I, again, I'm surprised that Kike Hernandez changed back to his old stance right here. It's really, it's wild because I feel like his adjustment that he made made a lot of sense. It was one of those swings adjustments going into the season. He had a tough year last year. I'm like, this is a great adjustment. He's going to come back here, go back to playing like the Kike Hernandez. We know he can be. And now we, after like 10 games, is going back to his old stance. And I don't like it at all. I think he's going to get out in front of balls. He swings and misses a lot, a lot of pitches, and he <laughs> drills one foul just out in front of that one right there. That one was hit like 110. <laughs> oh, and we, why are we shitting on someone's grammar? Maybe they just made it, it's a, they made a typo. 30 pitches this inning so far for you, Darvish. Two and two. Just gets a piece of it right there. Three. The count remains two and two. I would go curveball. Keith Hernandez will be swinging, guaranteed. Curveball low. Curveball low. You Darvish holds. Fires. Ooh, goes fastball sinker inside. Almost gets a piece of Hernandez. 3 2. <laughs> Up to 78 pitches. And through three and two thirds for you, Darvish. So the bullpen's going to have to get working for San Diego soon. Three and two to Kike Hernandez. He holds a lot longer than normal, but Kike Hernandez takes a curveball right there. That's a, a, a pitch that Kike Hernandez a lot of the time chases. We see him a lot of the time go out of the zone for bad pitches, and he works a two out walk. Ooh, next Sunday night baseball, Texas versus Atlanta. And once again, everybody, we are going to be live every single Sunday night baseball. So, We'll be watching Texas versus Atlanta next Sunday night baseball as well. That's a great matchup. Great, great matchup. Potentially could be a World Series preview. You never know. And we're seeing the pitching coach. I, I've never seen this. This guy does not look like a pitching coach. This guy looks like a, a strength training coach. Pitch the ball. <laughs> 
Owen Kenny's the GOAT, I guess. I guess so. Hey, anyone viewing on YouTube, if you guys want to watch this game live with us, playback.tv slash MLB Red Zone. You can come tune in. Sunday Night Baseball, we are watching it live. Currently 3-1 to one LA Dodgers in the bottom of the fourth inning. It's all free. You can come tune in. And uh, we do this every single Sunday Night Baseball. We do it all the time during the week. We make baseball content. So make sure y'all subscribe as well. But yeah, hop on over to playback.tv. Next time we're going to stream. I, I have to think about it. I have to see. Definitely, I'm not going to stream tomorrow. But um, Tuesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, we're probably we're going to do a mid midweek stream. And then we might do like a Friday, Thursday slash Saturday stream. So probably I'm aiming for three times. I think three times a week to stream is a good is a good goal. That's a that's a best case scenario. And then Sunday night baseball, we'll watch it next week. He got, I think he might go right here. This would be a good time to steal. Also, Gavin Lux. Good time to get a base knock right here. But, yeah, you Darvish got to lock in right here. He's almost at 35 pitches just in this inning. He's got to just throw some strikes. Want to know? Oh, misses upstairs the car. Not even a bad pitch, but can't be signed. It doesn't really try to frame it right there. Is this the final game? Are they playing the Padres? Padres versus Dodgers. Are they playing tomorrow? I think this is a three game set, but they might be playing tomorrow. No, they're not. The next time we see these two teams is May 10th. And Gavin Lux is going to fly that one actually relatively deep into center field. Merrill going on the track and he makes the Final out in the fourth inning. But the Dodgers do their damage. Will Smith, RBI single, and Max Muncy with a two-run shot. They score three runs, and we head to the fifth inning on Sunday Night Baseball. Yeah, the Dodgers lineup, in my opinion, is one of the best that I've seen. Pitch the ball. We got to to appreciate how much – how many Hall of Famers they, they really do have. And really, baseball nowadays, dude, there's so many talented teams. It's really absurd. Like, think about it. The Atlanta Braves had the statistically best lineup of all time last season. Statistically. I don't know if it was actually the best. But it, statistically, they had the, the most home runs ever last year. And they have such a good lineup up and down. They have Ronald Cunha Jr. Uh, one through nine, they're elite. The Yankees now with Soto Judge. Stanton, Rizzo, their lineup is loaded. Also, Volpe's going crazy. The Texas Rangers lineup, what they did in the postseason last year, very leads. Um, who else do we have? The Astros lineup, we've it, it's definitely died down, but they still have a phenomenal lineup. In, in most years, it's a top five lineup in baseball. Um, the Padres still have an elite lineup, though it's not as good as it was last year. Um, last year, last year, you can't understate how talented of a lineup that they had last year. The top four. Of um, Xander Bogarts, Juan Soto, Manny Machado, and Fernando Tatis Jr. I can't believe they didn't work out last year. It's one of the, that's got to be one of the biggest failures in, in baseball history. We are back on Sunday Night Baseball. Oh, I watched this interview. Dude, this was such a good interview by JV. Actually, I'm going to play. Look at John Boy. Oh, John Boy is just him. Look at this. Wow. Wow, man. They put together this whole montage. 
I love Sean Casey, by the way. Sean Casey is one of my favorite analysts in baseball. Xander Bogarts, that one's going to be flown into right center field to Oscar Hernandez. Takes charge at the end right there and makes the play. Why are we showing the exit velocity of that, of that fly, that routine fly ball? There, That was 98 miles an hour. I know that was a pop-up. I understand how it could be kind of high exit velo. 98 miles an hour. I have to see if that's true. Oh, I forgot to show you Darvish's baseball spot. All right, it's okay. But James packs in here back out for the top of the fifth inning. You got Fernando Tati Jr. Fernando! He's about to hit a tank, y'all. He's about to hit a tank, man. Come on, I need to get this TikTok of me um, watching Fernando Tati Jr. hit a tank. Just upstairs right there from Paxton. You see a cutter. Finally, man. Work the other pitches. One and one. But yeah, if James Paxton, he could actually, he could get to six innings, bro. Six innings of one run ball. Very good start. Even though it's, he really hasn't looked good. For being honest with each other, has not looked that good. Two and right, two and one. Change up away. Is he going to go back to that fastball? Very fastball count, and he does. Inside the misses three and one to Tatis. Now you said, I feel like you have to go fastball. Paxton probably will go fastball here. He is. He's going to miss inside, and Tatis works, uh, I think, his second walk of the game. My TikTok user is. I think it's you can just look up Jared Berman. You probably just look up that and you can follow me. We post a decent actually, we're posting more content than I probably like to cut like to make on TikTok. I mainly just want to be we stream and we post long form YouTube content, not post all the TikTok videos. But I actually do enjoy making the TikToks. I like doing the previewing the day of baseball. That's fun every single day. I like making quick reactions. To games I'm watching. If I'm watching a game live and I'm not streaming, sometimes I like to film it like that. So I actually do enjoy making the TikToks. Dude, six walks. Oh my God. Yeah, he's not been good, James Paxton. Got Jake Crona with the Crone Zone one and one. Dials that one off of his foot. I appreciate appreciate you for following me on um, Pitch the Ball. One and two. Paxson goes fastball up and inside. That's what he's been doing a lot. He misses a lot with the fastballs, and they're not swinging at the zone. Now, he's not setting it up enough where they would. If he goes lots of curveballs low, cutters low, and then he throws that fastball upstairs, I think he might get more swings and misses than he is. But he just continues to he's, – he's very he's very stubborn right now, Paxton. On the verge of a seventh walk this game. Dude, this could be the most walks um, in a game and, like, be successful. Only five innings of one run ball, eight walks. <laughs> that would be wild. And Corona where it's going to ground to Gavin Lux there. He turns one, and there is two. James Paxton gets a much-needed double play to end the fifth inning. 84 pitches, five innings, one run ball. He might be out for the sixth inning. And he's looking re – actually, I don't know if he will be because Machado is coming up, and he did hit a home run. So I think they might go to the bullpen, L.A. But a, a valiant effort for Paxton – did not pitch well, but the stat line only allowed one run. Oh, yeah. Let me actually share um, you Darvish right here. Look at you Darvish's pitch distribution. Look at this pitches, man. Look at this, dude. 18% sweeper, 18% sinker, 17% slider, 17% 14, 12% curveball. That is five pitches that are practically all – the same percentage of the time that he's throwing it. And then cutter, split finger. He's throwing that 8% of the time, but when he throws it, it's a really great pitch. Let's see the adjustments this season. He's throwing the cutter a lot less. What did he throw the cutter last year? 9% compared to 
3% early on in this season. He's gone to the curveball more than he did last year, 12% to 18%. Slider, sweeper, split finger, 13% last year. And early on in this year, it's been a little bit less. Okay. His honestly, his savant doesn't look as good as it like 2022 is probably all red. Yeah. Dude, look at that, man. Pitching run value 99th percentile. Fastball breaking run 99th percentile. Elite. 194 innings, 310 ERA. He was so good. Oh no, pitch the ball. You're following the wrong one. Oh, dude, I think I still have that. That was an old TikTok. Dude, the TikToks are probably terrible. Um, oh, Owen oh, Kenny liked the video. <gasps> Shout out to you. Oh, you just followed me. Yeah, you got it. We got glass now on the mic. We are back here. We actually just broke down Tyler Glass now. You guys want to see how Tyler Glass now struck out 14 strict pitch. Um, he sh- I don't know what the fuck just happened. He struck out 14 hitters in 88 pitches, seven innings, three hits, no walks, no runs. He was in it's one of the best starts that we'll see in 2024. As Mookie Betts golfs one to Jerson Profire in left field for the first out in the fifth, but Tyler Glasnow is the most dominant pitcher in all of baseball when he is on. I truly, I truly believe that. There's no better starting pitcher than Tyler Glasnow. He only has three pitches that he primarily uses. And it is insane how dominant Tyler, like he's never pitched over a hundred innings, I think in his entire career. It's genuinely a crime. Because how talented he is, it's uh, he's honestly in, in my years of watching baseball as a starter. I don't know if there's anyone better when Tyler Glass is healthy. Got Shohei Otani up here, Darvish starts small backdoor sweeper. Oh, and one, he loves that backdoor sweeper, backdoor curveball. Also, he likes the inside sinker where it's inside and then it tails and just clips the inside corner. He's going to go slider right there. Hard slider, probably kind of a cutter-ish, but that's the type of that's the type of pitch. It registers as a slider, 89 miles an hour. He throws sometimes that 92-mile-an-hour cutter that really darts this way. That one probably, I actually I think it had more downward action to it. And he just mixes up so many different pitches. Leaves a fastball right down the middle. Otani fouls it off of his foot. 0-2. I think that's the second time we've seen Otani miss a fastball. Middle, middle. Tiny having opportunities here. Let's see where Darvish goes. I'd love to see a split finger. I've said it for so many times. Can't we come on? See the split finger alone away. See it. Yes, he does throw it. A good pitch, but Otani gets he spoils it. Continues it at 0 and 2. Love that pitch right there. Love it. Now backdoor, backdoor slider. Backdoor slider. Go back to it. Or maybe he might go cutter inside. Cutter inside is probably the more safe pitch. He goes cutter. He leaves it middle down, and Otani gets over it. That's the second strikeout you Darvish has had versus Otani. Actually, he only has two strikeouts this game, and they're both against Otani. But they're both on the cutter. Otani, pretty much similar hacks being over the cutter. And two away in the fifth inning for you Darvish. Here we got Freddie Freeman. First pitch fouls it off. Tyler Glass now. I love. I want to. I want to get Tyler Glass on the podcast, dude. We need to get Tyler Glass on the podcast. One of the most funny 
genuine dudes. His his interview with Chris Rose when he was sitting on the bed, it's just I he's got a really good mind for baseball. So I think it would be a very interesting and fun conversation. He leaves a, a cutter. I that registered sweater, that looked like a cutter. Middle, middle, but Freddie fouls it off. Wow, the Dodgers scoreboard, dude. That's the most advanced scoreboard that I've seen. Whenever you go to games, I when I remember when I went to the Phillies, Phillies game in Citizens Bank Park, their scoreboard, I really did not like how it looked. It was very tough to see the actual data on the pitches. And Freddie Freeman, that one's going to be flown to Jackson, Maryland, center field. But it, I, I want to be able to see the actual pitch. Like, if you're sitting up high in the stands behind home plate, so you can't tell really if you saw on a fastball, if you saw on a slider, a cutter, a changeup. But uh, having that pitch thing and you see 83 mile an hour changeup, 95 mile an hour fastball, also you can see the velocity. And, and Citizens Bank Park, I remember they put it in the weirdest spot, and it was very tough at my angle of my seat to actually see it. But that Dodger scoreboard looked very, very cool. That's a big part of actually – watching game in, in in person so i have to go to the bathroom real quick i'll be back in two minutes i'll be right back Still in commercial break. Let's see how the TikToks do. Actually, let's see how the YouTube video is doing from um today. Tyler goes, y'all need to go check it out after this game is over. The weekly recap show. Go check it out on YouTube. Um, I worked really hard on it. Hopefully, it's good. Um, I, I think it's pretty good. They're definitely. I I need to. I think I can do better with the recap shows, but um, as we get farther into the season, I'm very excited. I think the recap shows are going to be really cool as we continue to develop. Hopefully get interviews. I'm definitely – we're going to get an interview by the end of the season. I can I can guarantee that like Charles Barkley. So I'm excited. And the guess the umpire's got 2,000 views. We need to get that on the actual podcast. But we are back here. Top of the sixth inning. Manny Machado back up the play. And we're seeing James Paxton stay in the game. Okay. Let's see if Machado can take him yard once again. Pitch count still not too high. 86 pitches. If he gets through six innings with seven walks but only one run, it's a very Blake Snell-ish start. Velocity still 95, so not terrible for Paxton. But once again, falls down 3-0. To Manny Machado. Gets a fastball in there, 3 1. Misses low. That is his eighth walk, y'all. Eighth walk of the game for James Paxton. I think it's eighth, right? It's eighth or seven. I'm waiting for the graphic to pop up. Let me check real quick. Oh, seven walks. I'm sorry. It is his seventh walk of the night. That is still wild. Seven walks. <laughs> He's not giving into the hitters. That you can say that much. Misses way upstairs with that curveball. I would get the bullpen working right here. I think it could potentially get messy. Want to know fastball did profile go? I don't think he did. 
I don't think he did, right? Yeah, 2 0. Just fall behind hitters. And we're going to see, we have Will Smith go out and talk to Paxson. Oh, wow. Dude, look at this, bro. This is wild, dude. This is wild. Ooh. Oh, I was trying to crack my back right there. Yeah, but the pitching injury problem that's taking over baseball. I Honestly, it's pretty crazy. I think this probably started like a – a year ago, like I was expecting, like I, at least in my brain, I expect pitchers that pitch a lot and are very good. Like I expect them. I'm like, we're only going to have him pitch this well for like two, three years. He's, he's got to get some sort of arm injury. Like we got to appreciate the life and how good this pitcher is before he actually gets Tommy John surgery, elbow surgery, shoulder surgery. It's wild, bro. How it's come to that. Like with a hitter playing well, like Fernando Tati Jr. playing well, I'm not worried about like, oh, it's we've only got a few more years of him. He's he's got to have an, an ACL surgery. Like no, he's just going to continue playing. If something freaky happens, it, it's going to happen. But um, with pitchers, it's just only a matter of time nowadays. It's just it's crazy. I don't know what I don't know what the like what the solution for. I don't think it, I don't think there really even is a solution. I think I'd be I'm honestly interested to see how it develops over the next 10 years if it becomes even bigger of an issue than it is now and what the MLB tries to do. And James Baxton, his eighth walk, bro. His eighth walk of the game, dude. Come on, wait, let him pitch out of this somehow, get a little double play. Um and and six innings, no one run and eight walks. That's a wild sound. Dude, this is crazy. Look at that graphic right there. Rate of four seam sinkers and 95 plus 35% compared to 13. Dude, and the breaking, but the breaking balls is the wildest part, dude. I don't understand how sometimes we see 93 mile an hour sliders. Sandy Alcantara is the king of doing that. 93 mile an hour slider is the wildest thing of all time. Throwing a 93 mile an hour fastball can get you by in the MLB, but a slider with elite cut to it it's the craziest thing in baseball and also johan duran <laughs> johan duran is not a human pitcher he throws a 96 mile an hour splitter how can the padres score one run on eight walks we're about to see right here no way and dave roberts is pulling james paxton out here i wanted to see him try to work out of it once again but at 95 pitches against ha Sung kim James Paxton's night is over. We're going to see if – is this Ryan Brazier? I think that's Ryan Brazier. He's going to come in to a first and second situation with no way. And let's see if he can get out of it. Padre, another opportunity to score. Yeah, the, the Padres, they need to come through on some of these opportunities. But the Padres, this season, they've had like three good comeback wins. Their offense is relentless. They come through when they need to early on in the season. They did eight to nothing comeback um, to the Cubs a couple nights ago, I think a week ago. Um, and then we saw earlier in this series, game one, they were down 7-3, and they came back and wanted an extra. So they can come back. This offense is very, very good. Release your inhibition, feel of it, your skin. Dude, the NBA season was a wild. I know that, dude, the Knicks got the two seed, y'all. I don't understand how the Knicks got the two seed, man. I don't understand how they got the two seed, dude. I, don't, I really how I I I thought the Knicks were going to be locked in to the um oh the Thunder got the one seed as well, dude. The Nuggets had it in the bag, but the Thunder win five straight to end it off, and they're the one seed. That's crazy. Wow. Shout out to the Thunder. 
That's actually really big because uh, Denver at home is one of the best home court advantages in the NBA. So at OKC getting it, and now if they potentially play in the conference finals, which I don't know if it will happen, but Thunder having home court is very big. I mentioned, I think the Thunder – I, I think that the Thunder actually are ready. I, I I think they could get to the conference finals. I think the conference finals is their max. They're in an insanely tough Western Conference, but I think they could get. Um, they could. They they're gonna be very competitive. Whoever they go against, the Lakers, the Warriors, the Kings, all very good teams. The Thunder are very very good, and they're they've got a team. Shea Gilch Alexander is a superstar. I see Ryan Brazier here leaning his head always. I, I, actually, it's crazy that Brazier does that. It's such an interesting part. Like, does he consciously do that? Or is that just natural? He can't change it. He's literally like this. 95, bottom of the zone. But he came over from Boston last season. He was really struggling. But uh, coming over to the Dodgers, he was a lot better. He's got good stuff, fastball, slider. He's got some good tunneling action. One and one right here to Kim. Good sinker inside. Love that pitch right there. But Kim takes it inside. Two and one. Look at that stat line. Look at that stat line. Most by any pitcher in a game this season. Yeah, it's probably going to stand for a decent amount of time. Pitches inside. Three and one. You can't walk him, dude. You can't walk him here. So many walks for the for the freaking Padres so far. This game also, dude, is 9.30? Damn, this game has been long. I mean, we had the rain delay. This might go to 11. Brazier deals. He goes fastball inside, and Kim works a walk. So that's going to load the bases in the sixth inning. Um, I think Jackson Merrill is coming up here in a big spot. Three straight walks for the Padres to start off the sixth. Let's see if the Dodgers can work their magic right here. Mm. Can't be Sano up the plate. Sinker low. Luis can't be Sano. He 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 almost hit a home run. He was so close in his uh, second at bat. Took I think Kike right to the track. And he chases a slider right there. Oh, and two. Is he going to go back to that slider? I would. And he does. That's going to be grounded to Mookie Betts. He turns. There's one and there's two. A tailor-made double play. It's going to score a run for San Diego, but the Dodgers would gladly trade two outs for a, one, a run in that situation. And once again, the Dodgers get a big double play. I think that's the third time they've got a big double play. Great turn right there from Mookie. Gavin Lux, strong throw, easy. And now two away with a runner on third base. Pretty big run that potentially could tie this game up right here for Jackson Merrill. Want to know, Merrill, now it's going to be grounded up the middle. Oh, Mookie Betts makes a nice stop. He's going to miss the throw to Freddie Freeman. I think that's going to go into foul territory, and Merrill's going to be able to move up to second base with an RBI single. E, E6, E5 is going to be able to move him over to second base. And let's see that diving stop by Mookie Betts. A really great stop to keep it. He actually gets a hold of it perfectly. A tough play. Um, he needed to make a perfect, strong throw. And even if he does, I don't know if he actually gets Merrill. He can really run. But Merrill puts it in play. Hits the ball hard right there. And the Padres tie this game up at three apiece. E6, dude. I, I've never been able to know um, the numbers of the of the players in the baseball field. I know uh center field is nine. Um E1 E1 is pitcher. 
I know. But have you guys, I've never been able to memorize that. I've never really needed to know what it actually is. But I know as an announcer, I feel like it's pretty important to know the numbers of the positions. Oh, we see Tyler Wade here getting a little pitching opportunity. Tyler Wade's going to work in the elite at bat right here. Guaranteed 10 pitch at bat. 10 pitch at bat. Takes a slider low. Let's see actually the longest at bat in the history of baseball right here. Tyler Wade. This is what he does. Tyler Wade. Tyler Wade actually is not going to be the longest I've had in history. Grounds it to Mookie Betts. He's running hard, and he's going to get Tyler Wade out right there, Mookie Betts. But the Padres tie this game up. They had bases loaded, no way. They get two runs out of it. Honestly, it's not terrible. You probably you could have done better, but you'll take it. You tied this game up in the sixth inning. Release your inhibition. Oh, my phone's about to die. Soft roasted chicken. All right, let's look up. Um, what was I going to do? Actually, let's wait. I'm just sharing this tab. MLB umpire quiz. Let's see if there's more because when I was looking at it, there was only seven questions. Ooh, Scout Life magazine. Let's see how this one works. Sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not talking about this. I'm going to be on Power Quiz. New York Times. Because that's where I did it last time. Here, you be the um, World Series edition. Let's go. Lock in, y'all. Lock in, y'all. This is this actually probably should be a video. How many how many things is this? Six pitches left? Oh, shoot. I I, I No, I don't need to make it a video. Or I can cut this up that we're doing right now. Joseph Verlander versus Bryce Harper. Bottom of the first inning. Let's make the call. That's upstairs, ball. I'm him, bro. I don't really know what else to say. Ball upstairs. Nice job. Let's see a replay. Oh, no. I'm called that a strike. All right. This is against Harper again. Bottom of the second in game four against Javier. Ball. I'm, I'm elite, y'all. I can't lie. And I'm making the call quickly as well. I'm making the call quickly as well. Nick Castellanos here. Framber Valdez. Lefty. Okay, let's think about this. That's low. Oh, that's low. Damn. That was a tough one. That was a tough one, man. Ah, damn. I, I had a feeling that would be a strike just because, just because they've been balls. And it, uh, that's a tough one. Change up love. Chaz McCormick here. That's in. That's actually in. That's actually in. Yes. That's not even close. That's in. Yes, sir. All right. We're back in San Diego. We'll put that game on hold. Bottom of the sixth inning. This game is all tied up at six. Um, in the sixth inning at three apiece. Will Smith leading it off against Eniel De Los Santos. Former Cleveland Guardian. Damn, eight games already? He's a grinder. Oh and one. Fastball upstairs. Fouls it off. Oh and two. I was just thinking about this actually because the Padres and the Dodgers both played two extra games early on in this season. Do we think that? their schedule will be really affected because right now they're, I think two games ahead of most teams. When do those extra off days come for both of these teams? And Will Smith, that's going to be driven into right field, actually softly looped and dropped for a single, his second single of the game for Will Smith. Getting off to start off the bottom of the sixth inning, but that's actually got to be pretty nice because I mean, they're two games ahead of the teams right now. And uh, a lot of the teams, they probably, in like, they we're talking like June, they might get two, three off days. Um, probably, there's probably some teams that only get like two off days in a, in a, in a series of like 30 days. That's a lot of games and a lot of days with no off days. The Padres and Dodgers probably are not going to have to deal with that just because those two extra games, I think it's actually going to help them a lot. 
Max Muncy here. He's already hit a two run shot in this game versus you Darvish. And he's put up great at bats so far to set the season off in the five hole for LA. Anyone viewing on YouTube, man, hop on over to Playback TV. We need to see y'all over playback.tv slash MLB Red Zone. Come tune in. Watch this game live with us. De Los Santos deals outside 3 0 to Max Muncy. Lots of walks, lots of balls, lots of walks so far in this game. Lots of them. Oh, we got Yuki Matsui warming up in the bullpen. Yuki Matsui is very, very good at the bullpen. Guess the call outside De Los Santos 3 1. Hey, 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 hey. See where Santos goes. Does he go to slider or does he go back to the fastball? We see Muncie crush that fastball. He goes upstairs and Muncie swings and misses. Three and two. Stay aggressive here, Max. This is the this is the type of um at bat. I feel like a lot of times Muncie doesn't stay aggressive. Three, two. Stay aggressive right here. De Los Santos, he goes fastball. Muncy under it. That was going to go foul behind home play. He's just under that fastball. We saw him make an adjustment, though. We saw him last at bat. He was patting it inside, um, I think, three different times. And the fourth time, um, he, he brought the hands in and crushed a home run. So let's see it again for Max. Damn. Look at Max Muncy up here on a list of legends. He's been with the Dodgers for a minute. Three, two. He, he goes fastball inside. That one is going to stay in the infield. Let's see who gets that one. Chrome zone calling everyone off, and he makes the play for the first out. Anyone viewing on YouTube, make sure y'all hop on over to Playback TV. We are watching the Padres and the Dodgers live right now. You can come tune in. It's a 3-3 game right now in the sixth inning. Come watch this game live with us. It's all free. Playback.tv slash MLB Red Zone. Come tune in. Say Oscar Hernandez up here versus Santos. Starts him off with a slider right down the middle, 0-1. Santos, Teoscar, that was going to be flown into kind of actually relatively deep center field. Merrill makes the play for the second out in this inning. They keep showing the exit velocities for these high pop-ups. Like Xander had that one. It was very shallow right field, and it was blooped so high in the air. But they showed, oh, 97 exit velo. Like that, <laughs> yeah, that's a launch angle of like 70, though. It's pretty funny. Also, I can't believe that ESPN is still rocking with the win, win probabilities at the top left. It's so video game-like. And that's going to wrap it up for De Los Santos here in the sixth. We're going to take him out, bring in Yuki Matsui here versus – is it Kike? No, it's um, it's James Altman. James Altman. So lefty-lefty matchup. Good, good time to bring in Yuki Matsui. What did you miss? I don't know how long you were gone for. I don't think you missed that much. 918, 944. It's 3 3 right now. I don't know. Actually, you might have missed the Padres scoring um, those two runs. They had bases loaded, no outs, and they end up scoring two. Um, they, they, they got a big double play, LA. And then Merrill gets a single to drive in the second run. So it's tied 3 3. And right now we're seeing. Yuki Matsui come in for San Diego. Oh, look at Reggie Miller. JJ Watt. I have type 2 diabetes and I manage it well. There's a story and a big story to tell. Guardians. Dude, I want to watch the movie um, Up. Right now, I think I might... See, I wanted to watch it after this game because this game should have probably ended around like right now. Go watch up and then go to bed because it's apparently, dude. I, I, 2009, 
um one of the most legendary kids movies ever i want to watch it because i va i vaguely remember watching it like 2011 but i want to watch it so bad now so hopefully this game ends like 10 30 see then i'm going to bed at 12 that's not a good idea but dude up is such a I, it's such a good movie even though i don't even remember it uh, dude i love these the animation kids movies sometimes like it it's not sometimes a lot of them are so good it's really crazy the movie inside out sing um there's numerous others spongebob is not a movie but the whole that whole animation series is insane like it, it's a lot in my opinion it's better than like regular tv shows the amount of effort and creativity that goes into them and they actually it like like inside out inside out is such a good movie it really it's it teaches you like real life lessons even though it's targeted towards like fifth graders I um, mean, younger kids, but it, it's so good. <laughs> who, who adjusted his cup? You see Lance Lynn. Lance Lynn be doing it all the time, man. After strikeouts, he'd be, he be adjusting his all the time. 0-2 oh, to James Allen. We see a nice splitter right there from Matsui. He goes with this another splitter. Lo, Yuki Matsui is a great addition for San Diego. They also added Usa Go, who's another Japanese pitcher. But Matsui is a very high leverage reliever at the bullpen. He had, I think, was he had one of the most saves in the NPD throughout his entire career. I think he's around 31-ish, but he's been locked down in the NPD. Oh, and so we go slider. That's going to be flown to Tyler Wade at third base. And that's going to wrap it up. San Diego. Gets out of it, and we are headed to the seventh inning, all tied up at three on Sunday night baseball. Xander, Tatis, and Jake Cronenworth coming up to start the seventh inning. Shines my A1C. I manage it well. Big story with a big story to tell. Oh, shoot. Appreciate you, Jared. Appreciate you, man. That means a lot, dude. Let's fire this comment, y'all. Fire the comment from Jared. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Hey, we got the same name for real. Stop playing with them. Um... My A1C. Anyone viewing on YouTube, we are watching right now Dodgers versus Padres. You can come tune in and watch the game live with us on Playback TV, playback.tv slash MLB Red Zone. You can come tune in. Mid midway out right there, I was through talking, and the YouTube viewer just left because you can see when they leave. Pitch the ball, man. Dude, you're speaking facts, man. Let's actually pin that comment. You're getting pinned. You're getting pinned. You're getting pinned. Woo woo. Yo, as we head to the bottom, we need we need to get more viewers actually though. Low key, dude. Cause I remember one stream when we got to like the ninth inning, we had like seven viewers. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but dude, it was so cool. Like right when everything was happening, a lot of people viewed in because it was a high leverage situation. So hopefully that happens this this stream tonight. Actually, let me make should I make another TikTok, bro? Um, whoop, whoop. That's what I'd be saying, dude. I'd be using a lot of vocabulary. Y'all, we are in the seventh inning right now. Dodgers versus Padres, Sunday night baseball, tied up three to three. Come tune in, man. We're about to see a great ending to this game. We have pitched the ball. Um, best stream ever. Like we're having fun right here. We're commentating on it. We're watching this live. Been a great game so far. The best rivalry in baseball. Come tune in. It's all free. Playback.tv slash I'm gonna be reds and appreciate y'all. Xander Bogarts leading this game off or leading this inning off. Got JP Fire Eyes. They got him from Tampa Bay. The Dodgers. 
MLB Red Zone. And we're seeing cleats. Eduardo Perez. Guardians. Great stream tonight. I appreciate that, Owen Kenny. That means a lot, man. <sighs> Hopefully, we get to we, we get a great ending to this game. I actually, I said I said I'd post the highlights to last Sunday night baseball last time, but I didn't have time to actually post it because you need to post highlights like the morning of, the day of, and I didn't have time to edit the highlights that day, so I ended up just not posting it. But I, I should have time tomorrow, so. I'm going to post the highlights of this Sunday Night Baseball stream tomorrow on YouTube. Xander Bogarts, 2-2. Two two. We're going to get that bat right here versus J.P. Fireisen. Good. That was a good changeup. I love that pitch. Xander Bogarts with a great take. Three and two. Fires and deals. That pitch is outside taken, and Xander Bogarts works a leadoff walk. Dude, we've seen like 20 walks in this game, man. Oh, my goodness. We have seen 20 walks in this game. Yeah, so this game started at 7.45. It's only been two hours so far. We are. This is probably going to go – this might get three hours this game. Might be Fernando Tatis Jr. up here. Squaring up to bunt right there. Let's see Tatis swing the bat. Dude, I would love to see um, you do the, you do the bunt, take it back. Ah. Those cleats are so cool. Oh, and one Tatis takes a great change up low right there. Cleat collection. Oh, my days. Dude, the Steph Curry cleats. Holy shit. That's got to be one of the coolest perks of being a big leaguer, being able to just rock any cleat that you possibly could imagine and have it. And also rotate through so many. He's going to just get back in there. Xander Bogart's on the back throw from Will Smith. Two and one. Tatis has worked two walks. He's 0 for 1. Still yet to get a lot of pitches that he can really do damage on. He gets a splitter right there, and that's going to be grounded through the left side. Xander Pogarts hustling to third base. They're not even going to attempt the throw. And Fernando Tatis Jr., that was 113? Oh, my God. I thought that was lightly grounded. 113 is not anything to sneeze at. That is, so, that is top 10. No, 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 no. We've seen some crazy exit velos over the past like three years, but that's like top 50 ish, like ever. <laughs> top, that's a random thing to say, but a couple years ago, 113 might be top five, top 10 all time. That is crazy. I'm a splitter that I thought he got the end of the bat on. So, first and third right here, no way. Jake Cronenworth in a big spot, and Cronenworth is very, very clutch. He is a very good runners and scoring position hitter. Do I play Madden 24? Uh, I don't have Madden 24, unfortunately. I used to play Madden a lot. Madden 20, I grinded Madden 20. And I'm a great Madden player, but uh, I do not have Madden 24. Misses away with the changeup right there. 2-0. Oh. It's a Cronenworth. You do not want to walk Cronenworth here. You bring Manny Machado up with the bases loaded. He's already hit a tank today. He hit a tank the day before today. Which is I that was the dumbest thing I've ever just said. I just said the day before today. He hit one yesterday. <laughs> and Jake Cronenworth swings right through a fastball. Two and one. Look at that Machado on deck. Fire Eisen was a starter with Tampa or a long inning reliever. He was using the bullpen. A mixed role. Long inning reliever. He's going to check on Tatis over there first base. Yeah, Tatis, this would be a great time to steal second base.
Fires and sets. He deals. He goes fastball upstairs. Three and one. There's so many pitchers are not throwing strikes tonight. <laughs> there, there's been so many fastball mi- fastballs missed upstairs tonight. There's been at least thirty that we've seen tonight. All just fastballs missed upstairs. Three and one. <laughs> wow. Well, as I said, missed fastball once again upstairs, and that loads the bases for Manny Machado. Seventh inning, tied game. Manny Machado in LA already hit a tank. This is a perfect time for Machado to hit a grand salami. What a swing, dude! And we're gonna see the guy catch it again. They're gonna show it again, guaranteed. What a baffle! Yup, got to zoom in on that dude. <laughs> they didn't really zoom in on him. Machado first pitch, first pitch crushing. Good changeup right there. Doesn't get the call. JP Fire Rising. Low one and oh, big spot right here. Let's see Manny Machado come through. Oh, Machado just gets under that. That's gonna be flown in the infield. And Gavin Lux gets under that's probably that's an infield fly rule. And one away, and a double play away from getting out of this, dude. The Padres have had so many moments, man. This, this will be like the third time where they've had a real opportunity with no outs, run, two runners in scoring position, and um, they're not going to get a lot of runs. Hopefully. I mean, we, there's only one away. You have Jerks and Profar. <laughs> Jerks and Profar in a big spot. You got Vessia warming up. Has to go slide our way. Um doesn't give him the call. The ump's been great tonight. I'm not gonna lie. We always shit on the umpires. The umpire has been very good. I don't think we've seen a lot of missed calls. Maybe very like like occasionally, like two or three I've seen, but he's for the most part been locked down this umpire. And Profer, that's gonna be drilled into deep center field. Outman going on the track, and that's gonna be off the top of the wall, off of James Outman. That's probably gonna score three. And James Outman throws the ball in. And that is going to be a bases clearing double for Jerickson Profar. That ball was crushed. A fastball way upstairs, and Profar goes up and gets it. Pitch outside, and he's able to put a good barrel on it. And a big, big, big hit right there for San Diego. They needed that. They needed that. That ball just continued to carry. I really thought that had a – I thought that was going to go. And that would oh my that was like one that was like six inches sick if that just had an extra six inches dude that pitch that ball is gone but a base is clearing double shout out to look how fast Tatis Tatis is in also Chrome Zone dude Cronenworth I, I I remember I think I looked that up Jay Cronenworth has like an ungodly amount of triples he's a he's on he's underratedly fast you wouldn't have think you wouldn't think Jay Cronenworth is that fast but. Six to three, San Diego in the seventh inning. Where that's probably going to be JP Fire Eyes and the it for him. Let's see if they do take him out. Also, Dylan Cease being on the Padres is, I still haven't like processed that. Also, dude, did you see Prime in the background? Oh my goodness. The Prime, the water bottles, like the water jug is, is Prime. And yeah, they're going to bring in Alex Vessia here. Release your inhibitions, feel pain on your skin. Versus Padres, yep. Sunday Night yep. Baseball, tied up. Whoa! What the freaky freak? <sighs> Owen, uh, Owen Kenny, have you ever watched the movie Up? Have you ever dabbled in that movie? Movie Up from 2009. Carl Fredrickson, a 78-year-old balloon salesman, is about to fulfill a lifelong dream. Tying thousands of balloons to his house, he flies away to the South American wilderness. But curmudgeonly, I've never heard that word before. Carl's worst nightmare comes true when he discovers a little boy named Russell is a stowaway aboard the balloon-powered house. 
a Pixar animation. I want to watch it. Dude, it's got 98% around tomatoes. Yeah, but I want to watch Up so bad right now. Apparently, very sad movie. Sad movies are the best movies. I don't think it's a movie if, if it's not if it's not making me cry. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Jerson Profar, shout out to him, man. Dude, is it? Oh, man. I feel like it's weird to say. I, dude, have you, any of you guys watched the movie um, Inside Out? Inside Out, dude, you, you'll ball your eyes out to it, man. I swear to God. It's such a good movie, man. Inside Out. <sighs> love it, dude. Absolutely love it, man. Also, bro, um, what was that new movie? It was with, I think Bill Burr was uh, one of the voice actors. And we're going to see, I think, an intentional walk right here to... I was that Jackson. No, I don't think that was Jackson Merrill to play, but that's going to bring up Luis Campusano first and second one away dude. 12 walks for the Dodgers pitches tank, bro. Wild. Wild. There's this is, there's just so many damn walks in this game, but a big spot right here for San Diego. They're up six, three, which is great, but they score one or two right here. Make it seven or eight, three. That really secures his win. A lot more than it would be. We know this Dodgers offense is one swing away from tying it up easily at any time. So Luis Campusano, he's 0 for 3 on the night. He almost hit one back in like the third inning. Messier. Deals fastball away. Also, anyone viewing on YouTube, make sure y'all hop on over to Playback TV. You can watch this live with us. Playback.tv slash MLB Red Zone. I don't want to see you guys viewing on YouTube. I appreciate you for tuning in. But to actually watch this game live with us, you have to head over to Playback TV. You can watch this game and also watch me commentate on it. And Luis Campusano fouls that slider away one and two. The win probability. This is why the win probability is really stupid. The Padres, I think at one point early on in this game, it was like the third or fourth inning, they had a 13% chance of winning. And we're going to see, uh, is that Jose Azarco, uh, who was pinch running right there, get thrown out on the base pass? He was trying to steal third base. Vesia notices it and picks off Jose Azarco at third base. Gets a really big jump. He was running way before he um, actually threw the pitch. Vessia notices it and makes a good throw to get a Zokar. Yeah, he was. He was pinch running. I think for Profar, actually. And actually, did he tag him? Are we going to see a little challenge right here for the Padres? I think we might see a challenge. Because I don't know if Muncie actually got the tag on. Let's see a closer replay right here. Ooh, that's close. I would challenge that if I'm San Diego. I think pitch the ball. You think he's safe right here? I think he's actually safe. We are going to see a challenge for San Diego. They're definitely challenging this. I think he's safe. I think he's safe, man. He's safe. All right, we need to get – we're we're over one on the challenges tonight so far. This is a safe call. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. This is a bullshit call if they don't, if they don't reverse it. This is – he is safe at third base. Jose is out there. Ooh, that's such a good stretch. Oh, my gosh. This is a tough review, though. Dude, imagine being in the review center as your full-time career. That would be really, really cool. I mean, if I'm not doing like this, uh, I, I mean, that's a career that I would love. That would be sick, dude. Imagine you're really – you're the one making the final call. You have that much power, a World Series game. You have that. You have an impact on actually the results of what's going on in baseball. That is sick. You think he's out? No, I think he's safe, man. I think he's safe. I will right, we'll see what happens. I got it wrong last time, so I'm not. I'm not gonna doubt in my opinion. Come on, let's see the. They're, they're taking a while to review this. Oh wait, no. Oh, they no. 
They called him out? Oh, my days, bro. Why am I? I'm over two. And we're going to see Luis Gabby Shano strike out. So a quick end to that inning right there. Pick off and then a strikeout in the matter of two pitches. Or actually, one pitch and then one throw to third base. And Desi escapes. But the Padres up 6-3 to three with a three-run bases clearing double from Jerks and Profar. Yeah. I, I got to take my L, man. I, I'm surprised. I, I'm normally good in the I, – I guess I was talking about me being in the in the review center. I don't know if it's going to be possible. <laughs> I don't know how I'm getting these wrong. That He he looks safe to me. I'm going to be honest with you. you know, I think I think what happened is um, – <laughs> I think what happened is that they called it out. They didn't have enough definitive evidence. There wasn't It wasn't really definitive, but I did think he was safe. If the call in the field was safe, I think they – Keep that call it safe. I don't think there was enough evidence to overturn that call. Feel the pain on your skin. <sighs> what are we in the seventh inning? Dodgers have three more opportunities to try to come back in this game. Let's get some boxing work in. Man, boxing is so fun. That is such a good workout, boxing. Oh, dude, you, you talk about something. You'll burn like a million. You, I think you burn like up to eight hundred calories of an hour of boxing. It's it's more than I think anything anything you do. And let's see the review, Matt. Look, come on, come on, look at this, dude. He's safe, man. He is safe. And Campusano shit. Campusano looks so similar to Tatis. He's so, he's so similar with the helmet and the hair. He's the, he's identical with him. Here we have Kike Hernandez up here versus Yuki Matsui. Love watching Yuki Matsui. Man. Love watching him. He tagged his foot. Well, I mean, it was a bang bang play. It was a bang bang play. I think you could argue both ways. It was very, very bang bang, and it's why the call in the field was out. There wasn't enough definitive evidence that like he definitely got in there. It was very bang bang, so that's why I think they kept the call. One and one. Hernandez out in front of that splitter, grounded to Ha Song Kin. He makes the play. One away. Love Matsui, man. That splitter low. That splitter low, that fastball up. Him and Shota Imaga. Imanaga. I keep saying Imaga. It's Imanaga. Him and Shota Imanaga. I love both of them. Shota Imanaga, y'all. He is actually the best pitcher in baseball. He, I feel like, is a certified ace. It's pretty crazy how these Japanese pitchers are getting undervalued. Like Kodai Senga, insanely undervalued for what he's actually done. He was so impressive in only his first season last year. Unfortunately, he's got some shoulder issues that is keeping him out. He'll be out for most of the first half. Hopefully he'll be back around the all-star break, Kota Senga for the Mets. But he really wasn't super highly touted out of Japan. Shota Imanaga, really not highly touted at all. He only got a four-year, $50 million contract. And again, I think he's going to be a real like, number one starter. He's got phenomenal stuff. Saw the splitter right there. Load of months, load of lux. Now let's go a little slider away. Slider away, Yuki. Slider away, Yuki. He's holding. He deals. Slider inside, and he gets the swing and miss anyway. Shout out to you. Actually, that was a splitter. That was a splitter inside. 
You guys see he's a dog, dude. He's a dog. What's oh, the up cam? I love the up cam, man. Got Mookie Betts up here. Back to the top of the lineup for LA. I'm interested to see if Matsui gets Mookie right here. Who do they bring in for Otani, Freeman, and Will Smith? Do they keep Yuki Matsui in, which I don't know if they do because that would be three innings because he came in in the sixth inning, sat, came in for the seventh inning, sat, and then comes in for the eighth inning as well. I don't think they'll do that to Yuki. So they're probably going to bring in another pitcher. So that's a, obviously – that's probably the biggest spot of the game, the eighth inning. If Matsui can get Mookie right here. One and one. You see a splitter low. Matsui waits. He fires. He's, a lot, he's throwing a lot of splitters, man. A lot of splitters. Three and one to Mookie. It's going to go fastball up and in. Wow, the win percent probably is already all, all the way down to 9%. It's a little wild. And Yuki Matsui completely jams Mookie Betts right there. Softly lied to Matsui. He actually catches it before it bounces. And Yuki Matsui, very strong seventh inning. He's such a good reliever. Really elite. Great pitch right there. Jams Mookie Betts. Um, I don't know how they did not break his bat. And a great play. Um, to feel that as a pitcher. Let's see the ump cam of this <laughs> nice play. And we head to the top of the eighth inning, still 6-3 San Diego. No one else will be a soul. No one else. Speak the reins on your seas. Hey. Let's check out fan graphs. Let's look up random. Oh, 2024 playoff odds. Let's look at this. Dude. Oh, I'm not sharing the tab. There we go. All right, playoff odds. This is after so early on in the season. I'm interested to see how much they take into account like this early on. So far in this inning, it's actually in order in the AL East. In this one, see, this is good, man. The Twins, yeah, they're six and eight compared to the Royals, ten and six, but they should have a higher probability to make. It. Even though the Royals, the Royals are going to be nice this year, y'all. I'm, I'm telling you, but um, bro, the Whites, what the fuck, dude? Dude, I know they're bad, but 0.0% .0 chance, y'all. Come on. They've got a shot. That's wild, dude. 0.0. <laughs> they're saying in no world possible, in no world possible, um, the White Sox can make the playoffs. That's crazy, dude. How did they – bro, what? No, tell, tell me that makes sense. The A's, I don't care they're 7-9 compared to 2-13. How do the A's have a 1.6 probability to make the playoffs and the White Sox have 0.0? .0? Make them have 0 0.2. See, this is why when this is why technology sometimes AI don't make, even make sense. Braves have a 97.6. That that is wild. 97.6. Oh my! How do what is Dodgers? 95.2. Wow. The Braves have a higher probability of making the playoffs than Dodgers. Dodgers have 16.5. Braves have 21. Dude, that's way too high. I'm sorry. Yankees have 10.2. That's the highest. The uh, Astros, 8.6. Rangers are so low. 2%. Dude, that's just not true. Um, how do they you're telling me you're telling me the St. Louis Cardinals, 1.7 compared to the Texas Rangers, 2%. That they're they're miles apart for playoffs. They're miles apart. That's disrespectful, in my opinion. Also, that's overvaluing the St. Louis Cardinals. They're they're solid, but I don't see them. I don't see their ceiling being that high. 
Also, the Giants. The Giants have 34% chance to make the playoffs. Padres only 39% chance to make the playoffs. Okay. See a slider here. Vesia in his second inning versus Jackson Merrill. Good day for Jackson Merrill. He's been hot to start the season off, man. He's hit very, very well. He's only 20 years old. Jackson Merrill's a stud, man. And he he's changed into center field and acted like it's just like his natural position, even though he's never played it. He's an he's an athlete. And Merrill, that's gonna be lined into center field. His third hit of the night for Jackson Merrill, man. He's a stud. 103 off the bat. Takes that fastball, man. He can go the other way as well. He just he lines the ball the other way. He puts he puts the He's very good lines to line gap to gap. He stays on the ball very well. Very flat swing. You'll pitch the ball. That's all. That's getting pinned. We're just pinning everything, dude. Dude, can we have two things pinned? I, I, for some reason, I can't. Oh, we can have two things pinned. Also, I'm gonna pin. I'm gonna pin something else then. <laughs> we could just pin. We could pin everything. Pin. Oh, we got three things pinned, yo. Do you guys – oh, we have four things pinned. Why do we have two best streams ever for real? And that's going to be bunted by Tyler Wade. That's going to be a sacrifice bunt. Tyler Wade almost gets there. Nice play by Vesia to make up the throw. But moving over to second base is Jackson Merrill into scoring position. Honestly, I like the idea. I do like the idea a lot. Being up 6-3, just getting that extra run is huge. Huge, 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 huge. Unpin. There we go. Oh no. Okay, whatever. I, I'm confused. I just unpinned something and then it unpinned two things. Can you guys see the pins? Pins in the chat. Can you guys see the pins? Because for me, it doesn't show the pins. Like, is it at the top of your thing? Zander Bogarts. It deals that pitches high. Bogart's able to keep his swing. So probably didn't check it for his base right there. Two and out. Bogart's there 0 for 2. His terrible April has continued so far. Oh, you know what? I actually am excited. In the next couple of weeks, Bogart's that's a tough call. That pitch is definitely inside, but we're gonna make my Talking about every single MOB team for 30 seconds. I, I love that's my favorite. Oh no, my AirPod just died. My that's my favorite video idea. I love doing it so much. Three and one to Xander Bogart. We're about to see another walk. <laughs> another walk. But dude, I love making the talking about every single MOB team for 30 seconds. My favorite video ever. The skies are beautiful in LA. Tatis on deck right here. And another walk, man. Another, another, another walk. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Who's in the bullpen? Nick Ramirez. Oh, former Yankee. Nick Ramirez. He's, a, he's, a, he's not actually that good. He's actually pretty bad, Nick Ramirez. Would not bring him in for Tatis right here. Would not, but 13 walks tonight, bro. This has got to be like a record we're creeping up on. This has got to be, man. What's the most walks by a full team in an entire game? Let's see. If Tatis hits a three-run tank right here, this game is over. Messi yeah, up and inside. And they miss so many times with that fastball. Up and inside or just upstairs in general. They, they're taking it every single time the Padres. Most regular series season se one regular season series versus Padres in 13 straight years. 13 straight years? Damn. That is wild. Oh my goodness. That okay. I was talking about the um making being really good. He has been great. That's a terror. That's his worst call of the night. Pitches inside to Tatis right there. One and one. 
Messi deals. He goes to the change up. Tatis just over a thousand off one and two. No, we don't run. No, we don't hop. All right, one and two. He's. I would go breaking stuff here, not go fastball. He does go slider. It does Tatis go. He is going to strike out. I didn't think he went, but Tatis was running out of the box right there. And that is the second out of the eighth inning. Good slider right there from Vessi. And yet yeah, Tatis definitely went right there. He didn't even try to sell it. Good pitch right there. That's going to bring up Manny Machado. Oh, I'm sorry, Jay Cronenworth. I'm sorry. Lefty-lefty matchup. Good matchup for Vessia. Though Cronenworth is a good lefty-lefty guy. And Cronenworth, first pitch, that's going to be flown in the outfield. Mookie Betts going in on it. Makes a catch. And the Padres, they had a chance to extend the lead right there. Really break this game open, but unable to. The game remains at 6-3 to three for Shohei, Freddie, and Will Smith coming up. Anyone viewing on YouTube, watch this game live with us. You can watch the game, watch me commentate, chat it up. We have a couple viewers in the chat. Come tune in, playback.tv slash MLB Red Zone. We can watch baseball live together. We do this all the time. Subscribe. We make great baseball content. And, yeah, we just watch baseball. We enjoy it. So I'd appreciate it if you come if you come tune in. Dude, I hate these ads, man. Nothing. You just be talking about the uh, the the symptoms that you have. The side effects are wild. Nothing. And then they have these all these happy scenes. Dude, I want to go to a resort. Oh my goodness. Dude, a resort would hit. I haven't been to a resort in like seven years, I think. Just indoor water park resort. Indoor water park's most underrated thing of all time. I think I think that's my peak life, honestly. That's the best three days I've had is going to Great Wolf Lodge. Swear to God, it's insane how good that fun Great Wolf Lodge was. Never experienced anything like it, man. Dude, what is this commercial? <laughs> Things getting clearer. I feel free. Skin's on me. There, that's on me. This is free chicken alert from the bro. This is an ESPN notification. Boban Marjanovic salutes crowd at crypto.com arena after missing two straight free throws to get Clippers fans free chicken. Bro, no way he missed the free throws purposely. First of all, the game had to be way over because Boban is not playing regularly. But that is wild. He used to be a Clipper, Boban, and he missed it intentionally to give the Clippers fans free chicken. Clippers fans go wild. Yeah, so the Rockets won, um, and Boban, Boban's on the Rockets. So, yeah, they were up, and then Boban comes in at the end. He plays 12 minutes. At, dude, he put a 13 in it. All right, Boban, I guess you like that. All right, we are back here. Sunday night swag cam. I get they're really buying into this cleat pipe, and I kind of like it. New bounce. Oh, you already know Shohei's getting a back from New Balance, but he's gonna come up here. Bottom of the eighth inning, Padres still up three runs. And yeah, anyone viewing on YouTube, you guys can watch this game live with us. Playback.tv. I'm actually gonna write it in the chat. Playback.tv. Click or actually just copy and paste this into your YouTube or into your Google thing, and you can come tune in. Pitch the ball if you got to go to bed, man. I appreciate you so much for tuning in. Have a good night. Um, I'll see you soon. We're doing a lot more streams. And, yeah, hopefully something, nothing crazy happens that you don't miss uh, at the end of this game. I appreciate you for tuning in. And what are we seeing here? Mike Schilt talking to the umpire about something. Next time we are going to stream, 
It's it's either going to be Tuesday or Wednesday. Tuesday or Wednesday. As Otani lines one, that pole was demolished up the middle. That's got to be like 120. That's got to be 120. That's only 108. Dude, that almost took Wandy Peralta's head off right there. And then leadoff single for Shohei Otani. It's unbelievable how casually some of these players can just pop 110, 115. This is what Otani does every game. It's 108, 115. He's he's demolishing the ball, and he's such a good athlete. He's 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 the best player I've ever seen. Hmm. But yeah, appreciate you pitch the ball for tuning in. Appreciate y'all. Nothing is everything. Things are getting clearer. And I feel free. 2024 hard hit leaders. Wow, Bobby Wood Jr. all the way up there. 34 already. And also a tiny tie. And Mike Schilt is arguing about something. We're going to see the umpires, I think, discuss right here. Mike Schilt not happy about what's going on. And I guess it's resolved. And we're seeing Freddie Freeman here, bottom of the eighth. And anyone viewing on YouTube, I just want to remind y'all, tune in to Playback TV. Come watch this game live with us. I'd appreciate it a lot. And you can watch this game live with us. And Freddie Freeman lines one at Xander Bogarts. He makes the jumping play. He drops the ball on the transfer. That was definitely on the transfer. And that ball was ripped, but one away for San Diego. Otani remains at first base. He dives back. In there. Oh, yeah, yeah. That ball scorched at Bogarts. Yeah, he drops it on the transfer. Otani dives back. But 6 3, San Diego right now up three versus the Dodgers. Dodgers trying to make a, a comeback here on Sunday night baseball. Will Smith up here at the dish. Two for two. He's looked really good so far. The at bats that he's put up in him. Very, very good. Ooh, he's going to go change up. That's Wandy Peralta right there. Wandy Peralta is one of the most fun pitchers to watch. Absolutely adore him. Competitor. He, he attacks you. He's shifty. He's deceptive. Lots of change-ups. Sinker. It's really just sinkers and change-ups. And he's very, very good at high leverage spots. And also, runners in scoring position. That's when Wandy Peralta is at his best. Dude. You put him in a bases loaded situation, no outs. He's the best guy to have in that situation. He's going to go check on Otani right there. I would not be surprised to see Otani steal bag right here. You get some more water here. Will Smith, that's going to be rolled over to third base. Tyler Wade coming in on it, and he makes a throw over to third base. I mean, sorry, to first base as Otani moves to second base. And now two away. Nice play by Tyler Wade. Elite. Defender overall can play shortstop, second base, third base, all at e an elite level. And he's been just good for the Padres. I love Tyler Wade as a player. Absolutely love him. I think he's a very valuable, good player to have on a team. And we are seeing, I think, the pitching coach come out here. Because I would be shocked to see Wandy Peralta get taken out right here. Don't tell me they're taking Wandy out. We're seeing them discuss. I don't think they're taking Wandy out. It wouldn't have made sense. He's only, he's only five pitches right here, and he's looked good so far. But uh, Max Muncy coming up to the play. He's already got a home run in this game. Hey, weird edits when I'm bored. Appreciate you for tuning in, man. Appreciate you. Of course, dude. And if you want to get more shout outs, hop on over to Playback TV. Preferably, I would want you to watch this game on Playback TV with us. I appreciate you so much for tuning in on YouTube. Um, but yeah, you can watch the Dodgers versus Padres Sunday Night Baseball right now. If you head over, it's all free. Playback.tv slash MLB Red Zone. You can watch this game live with us. And uh, it's a really great game right now. 6-3, bottom of the eighth inning. 
And um, yes, Sunday night baseball action. We do this every single Sunday. We watch Sunday night baseball. And also throughout the entire week, we watch baseball a lot to these live streams. So Juan Peralta is not going to get the call right there. I, I was talking about how the umpire has been really great this game. He's missed a couple calls, a couple calls, but one and one to Muncie. He's probably going to attack him up and inside. That's really the, the mindset that a lot of pitchers have with Muncie. But he did hit a home run on that same pitch. He's going to go slider, which you don't see a lot of, and that's going to be popped up to Ha Song Kim. Great location right there. Great pitch. Max Muncie, of course, he's taught. Uh, I mean, Wanda Peralta, he's always talking to himself when he comes off the mound. And that's going to wrap up the eighth inning. We head to the top of the ninth inning. San Diego still up six to three. So, yeah, appreciate you, weird edits when I'm bored. And anyone viewing on YouTube, make sure you guys hop on over to playbag.tv slash MLB Red Zone. You can watch the Dodgers versus Padres live with us. I'd appreciate it. It's a lot better watching it over there than watching it on YouTube just by face. And, yeah, we're doing these a ton, man. Playback TV is the best platform ever. I love it so much. So make sure y'all come tune in. Let's look at some more of the projections. So, okay. It's really, it's really interesting to see some of the projections so early on because, obviously, see, the Astros being 6-11 and 11, – and them still having a 70% chance to make the playoffs, it makes sense. But a lot of these projections, they do they do overreact. Like the fact that the, the White Sox have a 0.0% chance to make the playoffs. I, I mean, I think it should be 0.1. It's still so early, even though they're 2-13. and 13. But the Oakland A's have a 1.6% chance to make the playoffs. They are 7-9. and nine. They look solid. But to say that is wild. After just... What is it? 15, 16 games. The season is so long. That's definitely that's definitely a little bit overreaction over -react, over from Fangrass. A little, a little bit. Um. Also, also, dude, the, the Braves having a twenty one percent chance to make the to win the World Series, and then the Rangers having a two percent chance. All right, tell me, tell me how, tell me how. Okay, the Blue Jays. It's it's okay. I, I that's valid. But the St. Louis Cardinals. The St. Louis Cardinals, y'all, have a 1.7% chance to win the World Series compared to the Texas Rangers, who have a 2.0. Those teams are miles apart, miles apart in, in their team and their ability to actually win the World Series. I don't see the Cardinals ceiling as winning a World Series. They don't have the pitching staff, even though their lineup is very, very good. To win the World Series is wild over all the great NL teams. And we're actually seeing the Texas Rangers versus the Atlanta Braves on Sunday Night Baseball next week. So make sure all y'all tune in next Sunday to watch that game. So top of the ninth inning, Nick Ramirez coming in. And Manny, Manny, Manny Machado is going to light a first pitch single into right field. Lead off single. Great day for Machado at the plate. Trying to get back in the groove of the season. We actually need the Padres to win this game. This would be a big win, man. A big win for us. We moved to four and five in the weekly pick them for the season. It's be a great win. Jose Azokar. He was actually going to be their starting center fielder, Azokar early in this season, but they moved Jackson Merrill to it. And that ball is going to get away from Will Smith, and Manny Machado is able to easily move up to second base. Moving into scoring position here in the ninth. That Nick Ramirez last year with the Yanks. He, that, his ERA, 266 and 48. That's really good. But Nick Ramirez is – Nick Ramirez is – I. He's, he's, he's a solid pitcher, not a high leverage pitcher. But we've seen so many walks, dude. He's about to walk, Jose. Jose is our guard 3 0. Dude, there's been a million walks in this game. It's been crazy. I've never seen a game with more walks watching live. Finally, pounds in a strike 3 1 to Zokar. Slay, period. 
I appreciate. I don't know what. I don't know what prompt you say. Slash. Shout out. And that's going to be another walk for Jose Azoka right there. And that's like the that's like the sixteenth walk. You got yourself a new subscriber, dude. That is great. That is great. That's what we love to see, man. That's what we love to see. Appreciate you. Weird edits when I'm bored. I expect to. I expect to see an edit of myself. To be honest with you, I'd love to see a weird edit of myself. That's what I expect, man. Weird edits, man. Make sure you hop on over to Playback TV right now um, to watch this game. You can watch the Padres versus Dodgers right now live with us. You don't have to just watch my face. You can watch my face and watch the Dodgers game live commentate on. So we just saw a flyer right there. That's going to be a sack fly move Machado from second to third and set up. Who's that going to be? Is that Jackson Merrill potentially coming up? Here, first and third, one away. This would be a big insurance run. It's going to be Luis Campusano up here. Big insurance when they missed out on, on this opportunity in the eighth inning to extend the lead. We know the Dodgers lineup can one swing of the bat easily tie this game up. So getting it to seven, eight, nine, um, nine to three would really secure this win. And Luis Campusano just out in front of that changeup right there. Would have been a double down the line, but just fell 0-1. There will be an edit for you in one. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, that's going to be one of the best days of my life. I see an edit of myself. Woo-wee! That's going to be, that's actually going to be pumped, man. I appreciate you weird edits. Camp Usana goes down and fouls off that change of 0 and 2. Weird edits. Are you a big baseball fan? Are you going to tag me on TikTok? Actually, if you follow me, follow me, follow my TikTok. We post baseball content. We do weekly previews. I kind of just post whatever. I don't really take the TikToks too seriously um, rather than the YouTube content. And that's going to be grounded to Freddie Freeman. There's one. And there's two. One of the weirdest double plays you'll see turn. Freddie Freeman goes in on it, makes the throw to Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts catches it in a very awkward position and lobs it over to first base. Um, but they, they get the double play. Once again, the Padres miss out on insurance runs, and we take it to the bottom of the ninth inning. Still six to three, San Diego. I only have YouTube. Okay, that works, man. YouTube Shorts, YouTube Shorts is better than TikTok. That's I, I don't I never thought I'd say that. They're both, if we're being honest with each other, they're both they're both actually they're both bad for you. I being on YouTube Shorts like TikTok, being addicted to it, it's so terrible for you. It really is crazy how bad it can be for you, but that seeing an edit of my no, dude, seeing edits, seeing edits of certain people, you go you go down that rabbit hole, dude. I was just watching, I was just watching Olivia Rodrigo edits with So American. <laughs> right, we're in commercial break. Weird edits. What's your opinion on the movie um, Up? Up Up from two thousand nine. A movie that I want I want to watch it. Wait, up to? Oh no, that's not up to. I thought there they made a second movie. Actually, maybe they did. let me look up up to. No. Up will sequels. Date confirmed. Okay. Dude, I vaguely remember watching this when I was like five. No, not five. I was like seven years old, probably six years old. Vaguely remember watching it. Apparently, it's a very sad movie, and I love watching sad kids' movies. It's got great reviews, so I'm excited. I want to watch that. But I wanted to watch it tonight, but now it's too late. Hour and a half. It would be past midnight, so we are back on Sunday Night Baseball. <laughs> Watching a Mookie Betts edit right here. He's just the best athlete of all time. And he's a golfer. I didn't know he was a golfer. Damn, and he's a Home Depot guy. That's MVP. I actually think Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts is insane, dude. He, he should have won it last year. If it wasn't Acuna having a historic 40-70 season, it would have been Mookie. But he's he's one of the most unique players that we'll see. It's He's so valuable. The fact that he moved and he played elite center field, left field, a right field defense, moves to second base, plays great defense. Now he's a shortstop and he's playing great. And we're seeing, I think this is Robert Suarez. I could be, let's see if, I think this is Robert Suarez. 
It is Suarez. And the first pitch, Hasker and is going to ground that to Tyler Wade. He makes the throw. And quickly, one pitch, one out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Yeah, Robert Suarez has looked good so far. Lockdown closer. He's moved into that closing role with Josh Hader leaving the team. And they've just got a great bullpen, San Diego, in my opinion. This would be a good this would be a great series win, man. Great series win. They beat the Cubs last series, and then they come into LA and they take two out of three from the Dodgers. Great, great week for the Padres early on in the season if they can secure this win right here. Two and out to James Outman. Fastball upstairs, just take it high. And three and all, that pitch is probably in the zone. Well, we potentially could see like the 27th walk of this game. I actually need to count how many walks there were. There's been so many walks. I've never seen the game with more walks in my life than this game. And he's just going to get the call right there. I honestly thought he'd call that a ball, but three and one to James Alman. All fastball so far. Suarez has got elite fastball. Three and one fastball fouled off. Three and two. Oh, wow. I'm going to get the best back crack of my life after this pitch right here. 3 2. Is he going to go back to the? I would go back to fastball. Fastball. It's going to be taken high. James Allen works a one out walk. Not what you want to see, man. Not you. You should have attacked James Allen right there. Misses with the fastball. Oh, no. I don't want to break the chair. Hold up. Dude, I didn't even get the I didn't even get the, oh man that doesn't feel good actually. I'll use this instead. All right, Kike Hernandez up here. One away. Hey, he walks right here. Tying run comes to the play. Tying run comes to the play. So starts him off with a, a first pitch fastball in the zone. That's what you need. You need to attack these hitters, man. Kike Hernandez, he's a solid player, but he's bad. He's 449 OPS to start the year off. Attack him, bro. Do not be scared. Don't throw pitches. Actually, Kike, Kike is the one guy you probably could throw, like a slider out of the way he's probably chasing. But don't don't be scared to pitch to Kike Hernandez. One and one. Yeah, you don't want to get to Mookie. You do not want to get to Mookie here. So, yeah, actually big, big at-bats here. If you get to Mookie, that's dangerous with runners on base, him potentially being the tying ground. Pitch upstairs, two and one. Suarez deals Kike. That's going to be popped up. Go foul. And two and two. It's been all fastballs. We haven't seen any slider. He's got a slider in the bag. I would go slider right here, two, two. Kike. He's not a good breaking ball hitter, Kike. Oh, wow. It's getting deep. Two and two. That's going to be grounded up the middle. Xander Bogart steps on second. He fires over to first base and a game ending double play. The San Diego Padres beat the Dodgers six to three Sunday night baseball victory. If y'all are watching the highlights of this video, man, make sure y'all leave a like subscribe. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Great game. Great stream. Um, and yes, yeah, stay tuned for next Sunday night. Stay tuned for more streams. Follow me live on playback TV. That's the most important part. Follow me live on Playback TV. That's what y'all need to do. Appreciate y'all. Have a good night, and I'll see y'all soon.